All right, welcome everybody to this uh, special second part of my uh, Images and Words celebration. Um, I have the good fortune of having James Labrie with me. Um, James has been with me a couple of times. He's, um, he's really gracious to indulge me on my conversations about music and in particular the music that he makes, um, both with Dream Theater and in his uh, as many other projects. Uh, but today we're going to focus on Images and Words. Um, this album was foundational for a lot of people. Uh, I think what argument, the argument can be made that it was foundational for all of metal and progressive metal, for sure. Um, but it was foundational for me. Um, and I've told that story before about that sort of early love-hate I had with it because I, I recognized how, um, how foundational it was going to be. And at the same time, it kind of uh, helped me look into the mirror and see how, how far I needed to go as a vocalist um, and that was that was challenging at first uh, to sort of be made aware of but um, ultimately a blessing because then you begin to you know to work harder so anyway that's that's my framing the the thing about this particular record uh, and I've done some of this setup um, in the conversation I had with John but let me do some things that I did not before I bring James on um, this record um, was uh, it won Loudwire's fan voted March Metal Madness Award for best metal album of all time, right? And that's in the company of you know all the records you can think of right now that are your favorite best metal albums. Um, the song Under a Glass Moon was awarded 98th best guitar solo on about.com. Um, in 2015, the album was ranked first on the website Prog Report's list of top 50 progressive rock albums ever. Um, in 2017, it ranked 95th at Rolling Stone's 100 greatest, 100 greatest Metal Albums of All Time. So I could go on and on here, and that isn't even to speak to chart positions. This is a sophomore record, which usually, if you follow the industry at all, you know, a second record usually hits a steep decline. Um, that sales curve is usually what the excitement of a band's first release and then a, a tail. <clears throat> and marketing and music industry management people You'll hear them talk, <clears throat> excuse me, talk about managing the tail, making the tail as fat as they can so they can sort of exact as much revenue as they can out of an artist over time. These guys, um, the, the debut record was good, but did not hit that kind of altitude. It was this record. And um, there's a lot of reasons, contributing reasons for that that we can talk about. Um, my argument would be chief among, among them and not to, not to, to do any disservice to all of the other things, but chief among them is the addition of James. Um, and I think that some of the evidence that I want to point to and questions that we'll explore, I think will help, you know, um, me make that tenable for our listeners. Um, the other thing about this that's really cool is all of these things that I've talked about, these, these accolades come kind of full circle in an interesting way in, in that just within the last couple of weeks, I saw James in, a, in an Instagram pic holding up his, his uh, copy of a Grammy. So after 30 years, what began with billboard charting and all of the rest um, is a band still writing music that is so good, so acknowledged by a jury of their peers that they've been given, you know, if the highest, one of the highest, if not the highest honor for music making in the industry. So with that as my frame, I want to bring James on and we'll start our conversation. James, good morning. Hey, Peter, how are you? Wow, that is a, an amazing introduction. Let me tell you, and very accurate. Well, I didn't even know some of those stats, Peter. Oh, really? That you just, yeah, that you just named off. And it's like, that's, you know, you think I'd be, I, uh, some of them I did know, but the, there's a, a couple in there. I was like, what? Wow, that's very, very cool. So, it, hey, yeah. It's possible that I missed some. Um, I, I try not to be redundant. I, I, I used a few of those sparklers, as we used to call them when I was at, uh, doing the music stuff at Xbox. Um when I, when I talk to John. So hopefully, the, and my, my hope is people will kind of tune into these, these conversations I'm getting to have and, and kind of get the complete picture. But yeah, yeah these, sure. these are, these are, um, these are different uh, accolades than um, I've shared elsewhere. And I'm sure by the way that I've missed plenty, but it's remarkable when you start to look at it, um, the, how, where this album sits. And it, it gets more remarkable when you think that um, uh, band had a previous record that this was the first, I know you, you'd 
been active as a musician and you'd been in groups and we talked about that when you were here once right. but you came into this to this group and it kind of um all of all of the other cylinders were firing and then this like the magic piece and i i feel i feel good in being able to say that because i'm a vocalist mm -hmm. and so i have a bias that magic piece of that sound uh and a front man uh, every band knows it's critical and then that piece comes in and it goes from just being hey these guys can super super play and they write complexly to mm -hmm. something else um mm -hmm. and to take that one step further um you know and uh, not to put too fine a point on it but then you guys have a, a cut on the record that that captures the imagination of the listeners with that right. pull me under right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah and a lot of that song's great, man, but there's there's vocal sections in that song, truly, truly, mm. that are the things that that made people turn and pay attention. So, like, I don't want right, to, I don't want right. to overemphasize it, or, or this is not marginalizing anything else. But um, no, it's important not. to me yeah. to call to call attention to the fact, mm. uh, and I think there's a lot of people who who would agree with this. It was mm. it was what you brought to that thing that was the was the magic missing piece. And in and and helped set this thirty year career. Um, yeah. So part of that isn't so much a question as it is like I wanted. It's an acknowledgement that um, even if people have in their head or or intellectually, I wanted to say it out loud. Well, well, thank you. Wow, man, that that's great. I mean, you know what was interesting? Everything you're you're talking about there is you. Ha I think everyone pretty much knows this now because you just said it's been thirty years since that album. But when I came into that that fold, when I came and I met these guys, you know, these songs were, were written. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the best way for me to be able to, have, uh, you know, to put my stamp on it is I said, OK, you know, you guys practically have 99 percent of everything's here. Uh, the melody, the songs, the melodies to the songs, the lyrics. And I said, if anything, you know, I just want to be able to sit with this stuff and be able to somehow create and put myself on it so that it sounds like I've been there since the beginning. And it's a sincere uh, expression, so to speak, uh, right. vocally. And it was so cool because these guys were just like, hey, man, you know, like, first of all, whatever you've been doing so far is exactly what we're looking for. So don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking. No, I, I'm not overthinking anything here. I'm thinking how I can bring it up to the next level, right? And and make it so that it, it like some of the things that you're saying, so that it, it, it truly does resonate with the listener. And they're not just looking at it like, well, that's a nice addition. It's, it's something where they really, each and every one of those guys, musically and instrumentally, the, the, what they left the listener was with was, what the hell just happened yeah. and so i knew that something that i was going to create had to be that same kind of feel like what the hell did i just hear here you know like let's i want to listen to that again and i think it was it was really amazing peter because when we were starting to put this together even in the demo form i remember us high five and going holy shit yeah this is exactly what it needs to be. And then getting into the studio, into Bear Track Studio, and then really seeing like, okay, now this is it. You know, like we're, we're putting it down. This is going to be for infinity. And uh, it, it has to be something that, that we know deep down inside is we, we hit it. We hit yeah. it big. And I think one of the, one of the really cool moments that, that I remember hitting me and going, okay, I know now for sure that we're doing everything right. And I don't think we ever doubted it. It was, is the industry going to get this? And most importantly, are the fans and fans that we didn't have, <laughs> you know, to a certain degree. Um, anybody listening to this, are they going to go, wow, and embrace it? But what happened was I was going to go out for a walk. I was, I was leaving the studio and I was going out the, 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 the back way of the studio. There's this big major doors and i'm walking out and david prater who was producing the album at the time came up behind me he's like hey james where are you going man and um and i was like, oh, just i'm gonna go for a walk clear my head i wasn't recording any uh vocals for at least four or five hours i forget i think they were doing some stuff with uh ugh, i don't know if they were working out some 
things on keyboards like sounds like you know how sure. arduous a task that is because you, you start to look for that's got to be the right sound and Kevin Moore was all about well no sounds and he wanted to make sure that you know like you, hey he speaks for himself too incredible musician but anyway so 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 David says well let me walk with you for a minute you know and so we're walking and and he goes uh so what's your vibe and I said my vibe is I'm flipping out and I'm loving it. And I said, what are you getting at? And he goes, I'm telling you, man. And he goes, look, don't take this the wrong way. But he says, this album is either going to be explosive and it's going to touch every corner of the globe. And he said, or else, you know, uh, in a year from now, you're going to be in another band and you're going to be looking to. And I remember going, what? Really? How you think so? And he goes, but let's get back to my. <laughs> let's get back to my first statement i seriously believe that that's what's going to happen with you guys because he said what i'm doing here today with with working with you guys and i've worked with several bands and at that point like david was at his pinnacle of his success like he was working with so many bands everybody wanted him you know yeah. and uh and we were we were just uh you know coming out of the the shell so to speak and he was like i'm telling you right now i feel it in my bones this is going to be huge. And, you know, from his lips to God's ears, it happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly right. Um, I think he, I think he, I, it's, you anticipated one of the questions I was going to ask. Um, but I'm I think good at he, that, Peter, I'm going to continue to do this. <laughs> from, I'll sit here and make <laughs> face expressions and yeah, you, yeah. Just, you just do the whole thing. Oh my God. No. Yeah. yeah. I, he was, he was right. There was, there was, um, there was a lot of magic that um, sort of, uh, distilled and a lot of that magic comes out of a lot of hard work and, and energy it's not it's not uh um without all of the sort of necessary craft and diligence for sure but right. um there is there was this crazy convergence here and we're mm -hmm. going to talk i've got some questions that kind of lean in on that as we go through mm -hmm. i wanted to tell you though and i'm sure you've heard these stories yourself but the album is pretty broadly um it has pretty broadly been influential. And one of the ones that I think is really cool is I had, um, I mentioned this to John too, that um, another band I like quite a lot called Nightwish, um, mm, their right. composer, Thomas Holopainen, uh, it, I was talking to him and um, it came up that I'm a Dream Theater fan. And he said, Images and Words was the record that made him decide he wanted to be a have a band. Right. And, right, right, and of yeah. course, they've gone to be gone on to be quite the success themselves. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few others too. Um, I, a lot of the groups that I interview are are metal and progressive groups, but it was um, it, it's a it, it's a it's again and again and again. It is held up as a favorite, like a touchstone. Mm -hmm. um, and so that I, it's a legacy you leave. And so I mean, you you guys are not a you haven't rested on your laurels. You continue. You write new records and you tour. You're such a right. working band, and the band, the fans are blessed that there's always this effort to like put out something really great. Mm -hmm. The last couple yeah. of records, man, have just, I'm, you know, it, they've just been so good. Um, and that 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 through line for, that began with um, images is there, and so that's the framing that I wanted to to mm -hmm. um, have. And then I wanted to talk, start talking just a little bit about. We did, we did a little bit of this before, but a little bit about your voice um, before as a as a way to start to dig into some of the tracks because there's some areas that I want to talk about. Okay. Um, so you Hopefully arrive. I can answer them. Oh yeah, you all you, you you can. These are these are uh, these are in your wheelhouse. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go ahead. What did Go. Peter say? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So here's the thing. Um, you arrive. You know in the dream theater uh group you've done your audition they said yeah, yeah. We, we talked about the process last time yeah but at the time the trend mm -hmm. the vocal the vo male vocal trend wasn't really what you were doing i mean there were guys out there that were doing you know you, you had bruce dickinson still there doing stuff right right the, the, so I'm, I'm you know and, and jeff tate's there doing stuff but this this idea of of clean vocals um vocals that have that care a little bit more about the oscillation, um, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. That was that was there a little bit, but the right. prevailing sort of trend was not that. It was more of a, you know, that that eighty sound with a lot of gruffness and grit, right? Um, which is also more, cool. more garage and raw. Yeah, right? yeah, and, and for I sure. 
and I love that stuff too. Like I'm yeah. not trying to throw shit yeah, on for it. Sure. But you Absolutely. you arrive in this band that has this intensity of player like acumen at every instrument. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and along here you mm-hmm. come. And and what what I found, I guess, James, when I was listening to this album like kind of um intently in so that I could have hopefully uh, an informed conversation with you about it, beyond just like, dude, it's awesome. Is yeah, that right. <laughs> <laughs> well we can do you can High do five. that too. <laughs> yeah, right. Is, okay. Yeah. Uh, the the number of tools in your vocal tool belt were kind mm-hmm. of present at the beginning. Like I had, mm-hmm. I had to think. I think uh, in my head, got this idea that um, you, they said you'd develop these over time, and you certainly have added to. But as I was listening to, there's one of the one of the techniques you use is this this very intimate lushness in your voice. It's mm-hmm. um, it's got a little bre- breathiness to it. Right, allows for the communication of of vocal parts that need intimacy or vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's present on the record. Mm-hmm. Um, there is this, uh, this ability to get up into a register and we may have talked about this before, but in, on this record is so present where you're singing an entire section and the altitude in terms of pitch um, are, are simply make, are, are simply at a place where that most singers can't sustain. It's, right. it's athletic to do that's right. present on this record. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, pres- it's, it's all over that album it Holy is smokes. yeah for it sure it is and we're going to talk yeah. about a few of those sections mm-hmm. then there's also this this tonality you get where you right. get into certain um a lot of, a lot of times it's with the bigger notes but not always just the the, the high notes but it's right. a it's a a way that you sing the vowel that is so full mm-hmm. that it literally sounds different than when other guys sing that vowel now by the way little part of me wonders if this is if this is a blessing of you being canadian because you, some of the default positions on your vowels just have this they, they're gloriously they're unique and uh when you sing them um like it just fills up it fills up the listener's head right um and so I, the the point i'm trying to make is there's all of these these things that are kind of um flying in the face of the trend mm-hmm. and i oh I, yeah they were it made me wonder um is was this stuff all like had this been part of a conscious development of a james labrie style or did you just is it was this just you and this is you were just expressing vocally the way you felt right Uh, i think it's the latter of the two i mean i uh listen i mean you you know this peter i mean i i was growing up when i was growing up it was you know robert plant and freddie mercury and ian gillen and these guys were you know so instrumental in, in the way that I saw vocalists and uh, you know, even Lou Graham uh, was a big part of that. Yeah. Even listening to someone like George Michaels um, who had that, a beautiful, you talk about lush, you know, capability and, and then just being able to really belt it out at the same time and then have these beautiful notes. I, I think, um, you know, just a lot of it was just, there like i was able to to sing and put my voice in these positions naturally yeah and it 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 had to be something that that i you know i heard in my head or or felt in my in my body you know in my in my in the way that i was able to interpret things immediately and then just go with what was instinctual to me and and that's really where i came from as a vocalist it wasn't okay, I got to remember to do this. Or you remember how I worked on this and yeah. really for me working on my voice was, and I remember, and I, I think I said this to you in previous uh, uh, interviews that we've done, but my father came up to me at one point and I was around, I don't know, like 14, 15. And I was singing in the bathroom because that's where most singers want to go because the acoustics are are perfect and my parents had this big bathroom and and it just sounded glorious in there so i was singing and i came up and my father's actually standing on the landing of the stairs and i went oh what what the hell are you doing dad and uh and anyways he just said you know i'm listening to your voice and he says it it sounds great And and he says and i know these other singers that you listen to he says just remember one thing, because my father sang. He sang in barbershop quartet. He, he absolutely loved the voice. 
in, in every aspect of what it was able to, to convey from someone. And he said, all I want you to think about is this. He said, it sounds great what you're doing, but find your sound. Find who and what you are. Yeah. And I remember that just left an indelible mark on me. It, it was just like, oh, my God, you know, like, that's true. Yeah. You know, I have to be me in order to differentiate, my, differentiate myself from all the other singers out there. Because yeah. just like Robert Plant was unique, just like Freddie Mercury was unique. And so I think that was the biggest lesson. That was the biggest part of my development was that I was always from that moment on really consciously thinking about my sound what yeah. was it that i was going to produce that was unlike anyone else yeah. and then from there to just keep developing my the skills because I, I like peter i didn't really i you know i had a music teacher in elementary school mrs montgrain i still remember miss montgrain she was married um and she just said you know like i just love the tone of your voice just keep working on it and that was it so i think i took that into becoming an adult and and getting serious in bands down in toronto and, and so on and so forth and doing a studio session for this musician that musician even down when i was in toronto and just really just letting it come out like it, feeling the song understanding the, the the lyric which i've always said is is one of the most important things don't just sing words yeah. you want to get the message across you know emotionally and that's what I that's what I took when I met these guys in Dream Theater. You know, that's exactly where I was coming from. It's just like, okay, like let's just sit down, let's hear the songs and let me absorb it the way that it naturally hits me. And yeah. then I can make it myself. I can make what these words are saying, what these melodies are doing, what the song the energy and the vibe that the song has given me is exactly what needs to, it has to all filter through me and yeah. it will be natural. Then it'll be real. It will be real. And it will be something that people can grasp onto. Well, something you said there, several things, but um, w one of the things that really hit me was this the encouragement from your father to find your own sound. Mm -hmm. um, Cause there are no end of, of vocalists then and now who um covered james labrie and right. i don't mean dream theater i get they're they're the intent is for them to to do you and right right some of some of, some of them get posted in the, the dream theater facebook and they're always fun to see i don't i think it's all in love right it's all yeah, in, sure in love sure there's there's um and i've even seen um tunes like one of the tunes off of this record we're going to talk about from from a female vocalist mm -hmm. and it's not um it, yeah it's not about the pitch it's not about any of those things. Exactly. There isn't a single, um, there isn't a single one that ever um, achieves what you achieve with it. And it's because it's the, the stamp is not, um, can someone hit the notes um, or, or, or I would say even um, have the emotional quotient inside how they deliver it. I think those things can all be present. There right. is, um, there is something in, your voice and the way you you communicate those that is a hundred percent only you it's not replicable right. in the same way that dickinson or some of the other greats it's not re replicable right. um and that's and that the it arrived it arrived on this album mm -hmm. um i don't I, i'll be honest i haven't heard everything you've sung before there then so i don't have a good um, barometer but um, like the world kind of became aware of you with this record and it wasn't right. just, oh, there's another metal singer available. It's, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> did you hear what this is? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. anyway, so that's, 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 it's a nod to you, but it's also like, uh, it's, it, it doesn't actually surprise me that while you may not have been thinking intensely about this tool and this tool and this tool, you were thinking about, I need to be me. Yeah. And so now when you hear yeah. James Labrie sing, it's, um, you know, it, it's a signature, we, we, right? You know what I mean? Right. And, and I think because, you know, like I said, I think it was 14, 15 at the time. So I just thought that, okay, so now I'm going to take that with me and that's going to be in my suitcase every day of my life from now on. And, and that's what I'm going to achieve is, is the sound. But it, it got to a point that I did find my sound, uh, quite quickly and, yeah. uh, and, and from there was able to just say, okay, now it's just a matter of 
like I said earlier on, leaving my stamp, you know, on whatever it is that I'm doing at that particular moment in yeah. time. But I mean, even if you were to listen to, you know, like you were saying, you're not you're not that quite well versed on on the stuff that I was doing before Dream Theater. I mean, with Winter Rose, I mean, that was another thing. And, and it was Rich Chicky and I that was that were writing all that material. And, and Rich and I were the nucleus of the band. But boom, boom. And we were and we had great musicians around us once again, you know, even in that band. Uh, it was once again just saying, hey, OK, so this is the song that we're doing yeah uh there's a lot of other bands doing songs that are similar to this but we need to make it something that will uh have us stand apart and yeah. it, you know and even rich would, was the first thing to say it's it's got to come down to the way that you're going to express this song you know and we we were on that same page right from the very beginning rich and i just saying okay it's going to come down to this how are you how are you going about this just put me in front of the mic and i'll show you what i got in mind <laughs> yeah and i think that that's that's always been the way it is, you know, with yeah. whoever, whomever I'm working with or whatever it is that I'm working on. And even in, in my latest solo album, you can hear that. It's still something that is very dear to me that I want to almost uh, create another level, another, you know, uh, another tier for me to be able to say, OK, so, yeah, you've heard me for the last 30 something years, but I'm even still trying to push that envelope of who and what i am as a singer yeah that uh, that actually again you anticipate me because i was going to say that about um your solo record is it's another it's another gear um and that yeah. i don't mean by that oh he goes even higher now it's right, right. It, it's a new it's a new um way of, of that you found to express yourself vocally mm -hmm. and for folks who haven't heard um all of your solo stuff because right. there's been more than this, but but yeah, particularly sure. um, the most recent record with Paul. Um, it, yeah, it's, Beautiful Shade of Grey was just, yeah, it was quite a it, freaking thrill. It's, it, it really and it's was. kind of revelatory because um, mm -hmm. you, um, I was, I talked to Paul not too long ago yeah. about the record yeah. and it's um, the, the approach that was taken to it and, um, and how you deliver in that, in that album is yeah. uh, it's new. So for fans of Dream Theater uh, who haven't heard James's uh, Beautiful Shade of Grey yet, um, go pick it up um, or stream it or however you do it. Um, because everything we're talking about here, about um, you know what, what is part of James' voice and how he, he delivers a song, is just continuing to mature. Um, this is uh, just like all the rest of the guys. He's, uh, he's not content, meaning right. he's continuing to grow and push. Um, yeah, you want to continue things. to evolve, right? As a musician, you you do it yourself, Peter, like in, in the things that you create musically and you're, you're a great singer as well. And a great musician. If you don't push yourself and if you don't try to look for those avenues that will be somewhat daring and yeah. almost daunting, attack, then what are you doing? Like it, it complacency, what it, it, it gets boring after a while, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so, I mean, if you talk to any fine musician out there, um, they're always challenging themselves to, you know, well, you know, this is this is something that I've maybe thought about before, but I've never followed it through. And that's all part of it is, just, you know, you're you're growing as a musician, you're growing as a human being. Yeah, I think that that only that evolution as a musician comes through evolution as a human being. It, That's they, a good point. They, they definitely coincide absolutely you know there's yeah. no doubt about it you know that's that dovetails really well with one of my my soapbox things that i do occasionally about fandom um mm -hmm. and uh, where i think that that sometimes fans um pigeonhole an artist mm -hmm. or a band that they really like um based upon a time that they heard them or a record like it could even be images and words Right. And so it, as the band evolves in it, mm -hmm. naturally to, as humans, they're in a different headspace. They want to write about different things. They've got right. new techniques uh, with their instrument. Um, instead of becoming fans truly of the band or the artist and how that artist is in expressing their art, they become fan of a fixed moment in time. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, you still love them for the fact that they love yeah. images and words or whatever it is, but I've always found it, um, that really limiting like you know yeah. I, I, like i uh with your most recent records 
they go, uh, I, I love going back for these nostalgic reasons, reasons mm -hmm. and, and all of that. But honestly, I listen more to the new stuff. Well, if you listen to the Peter, and I'm sorry, sorry to interject, but no, come on. you know, if, if you listen to distance over time and you listen to a song like pale blue dot or at wit's end, Oh my God. I yeah. mean, to me personally, those are classics. Yeah, those are, sure. those are at the top of dream theaters songs as far as i'm concerned yeah there's so many others that we could just go pop, 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 and come down like sleeping giant on the last song or yeah. transcending time uh yeah. you know and, and the and the title track i mean a view from the top of the world yeah you dude. know the big opus from the album so it, it's it it once again proves uh to everyone out there that look at you know when we go in to do a new album it's not just so hey let's do a new album so we can go out and tour again well first of all you, you, first of all uh as far as i'm concerned personally touring is is a monster like when you yeah. go out there and you're out there week after week after week and you're doing five at least five shows a week we do five sometimes six shows a week and Listen, we're, we're not playing like an hour and 20 minutes and then a five minute encore or 10 minute encore and then see you later. We're playing two hours and it's intense from the first yeah. note to the last note. It's intense. And every one of us is being challenged. It's because every musician is expected to be at 100 percent. And that's fine. And I think that we land our mark quite often, quite consistently. Um, but the, th the thing is, is that when we go into an album uh, and, and we're, we're writing a new album, it's kind of like, OK, guys, you know, this has got to be something that is our best foot forward. And we once again have to do something that we can all feel that we've taken it again to another level right. that was it's, you know, it's it's unprecedented what we're doing, even though we have all these great albums like Scenes from Memory, Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence, you know, Octavarium. Yeah. Whatever happens to be your favorite, you go to that one, okay? You know, and, and that's what I think has really maintained our audience too, and the enthusiasm and the excitement that they have. It's it's not that, hey man, you guys didn't play anything, and, the, and we've heard that. Hey, you guys didn't play anything from images and words on this. How like how can you do that and get away with it? And I've always said because. We don't just rest on one album being, can you imagine what it's like with these, with these bands that they got when they go out on tour? It's like, well, if you don't play this song and this song and this song, yeah, you're just not, you, you, you just don't, you're, you're not I know relevant. exactly what you mean. You're not yeah. relevant, right? So they got to play their hits over and over and over again. We got a hit to play. <laughs> <laughs> we have a hit to play. No, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but anyways, it's I know what unfortunate, you mean. but fortunate. Because if it hadn't been for, for Pull Me Under, I, you and I wouldn't be talking here today. Put it that way, because it did, it put yeah. us on the map and it gave us that foundation that we were able to build from and, uh, you know, and have what we have still 30 years later. Um, but I think that that's what our fans, they see that, that each and every album that we go to put out is something that we feel is this best represents who and what we are today. And we're still striving to create what we feel is the best music. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's rare to have a band that has this kind of longevity in the first place, because in, unless you're one of the monster bands, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. you don't. A lot of bands just simply don't. But you have this no. loyal base um, and once you get a band that has longevity, it's even more rare still that they're continuing to make make music at all, new music at all, let alone right. that music being interesting. Right. So there's like multiple reasons why um, Dream Theater fans are blessed. And, mm -hmm. and that includes the ones who are the strongest critiquers. Yeah. Um, I, right. uh, I, hope, I hope at moments at night when nobody's around, they're like, yeah, you know, that was a rough critique. I'm so sure glad they're still making music. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm uh, sure some of them do. I'm, I'm sure, sure some of a, them do. I'm sure they have a conscience. Yeah, I'm sure it's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's um let's dig in a little bit here. Um sure. uh yeah. and go into the into the record. So yeah. was there a moment uh you know the whole where were you when Jeff Kennedy was shot? Is there was there a moment when I was six months old. That's where I was. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, literally, uh, I was six months old. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was six months old. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't think I was born yet, but I'm not that far behind. No, you weren't. You weren't born. No, yeah. But, but uh, the, the, yeah, the, okay. So you got another one for me? I can shoot these. <laughs> shoot, shoot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, it. Was there a moment where some where uh, like? Pull me under was blowing up uh, uh, like some sort of moment and you remember where you were and you're like oh like it's it it's took it's taken off like and you're sitting in a yeah. you know at a bubble tea like what no i'll tell you where uh so we were and i can't remember the club so you can't get me on that we were in connecticut we were playing and and uh, a couple of the guys from uh from uh jim Mateos and frank arresty is that yeah oh from fates is. from fates we're, we're there and at the time we had, our tour manager was Mark O'Toole. Lovely, lovely man who has now uh, passed on and gone on to the other dimension. Um, but beautiful soul. And he came up and he, he came into the, uh, the dressing room and he said, hey guys, you know, I'm just catching wind here that uh, the label's starting to freak out. This uh, song of yours has exploded. Pull Me Under has exploded at... at uh, college radio and from there it's proliferated out into uh national radio and everybody's starting to jump on it there and it's really starting to blow up oh. and that was maybe uh it was uh the the end uh of 92 is i think it was around december or something like that of 92 and, it, and he said there's something catching on here and it hadn't really reached the peak because in january february of 93 is when it really started to boom and it just freaking went through the through the roof and we were getting actually so it would have been around november because we were getting ready to go uh to japan mm. and that so i do remember that i do remember going oh wow there's something happening here because up until that time, we, we, were, we were playing little clubs and, you know, we were building like there were more and more people coming to the shows, but it was nothing like after Pull Me Under hit because yeah. then everything was just packed. It was like sold out everywhere we went. We were being taken out for <laughs> numerous dinners with the label because they were flipping out. We had, a, a you know, the, the Pull Me Under video was being played at MTV every, I think, twice in, in every hour. And... Uh, so things were, were really starting to smoke for us. Yeah. And we were like, what's the hell is going on here? Okay, I think we're, we're getting on that gravy train. Here we go, you know? And, and so, yeah, I do, re I do recall that. I do recall that, that moment. That moment. Um, yeah. When you were in that club period, that's when I saw you. Uh, I've told my story to you and to others about um, the album. But mm -hmm. what uh, I don't think I've ever talked about is yeah. Um, or maybe I did, but on it was November sixth, in nineteen ninety two. You were in Salt wow. Lake City, Utah. Oh, there you go. And okay. it was a little club called Rafters. It was a local rock club. It was a club that my band played from time to time. We hardly ever got in though, because we were more progressive, and they wanted all the stuff that had the L.A. sound. And we heard, it, and we had fallen in love with the album, and we're like, "Oh, these guys are coming!" So we show up, and there's like almost nobody there. We're like, "How is how is yeah. this possible?" Now we were early. But so we walk up and, and, and we were a year early. We were, we, yeah, like we were there and, you know, yeah, like yeah, the right. dishwasher is in the back seat getting yeah. ready for the night. Oh and my God. There, and we go, we just go right up the stage. The stage is only like, I don't know, two and a half, three feet tall. Oh yeah. And sure. stand, we just st stood there for a few hours until you guys were ready. Um, and it did, it did fill in around us over time. Right. But um, what, what was the club? Called Peter? Rafters. Rafters. Rafters, in yeah. In Seattle. Was, no, no. Oh, no, it, call, it, no in Salt, Salt Lake. Lake. Salt Lake, right. And okay. it was a, it was a okay. cool night because um, I, you know, it, so almost four months to the day since the record uh -huh. released, and I listened to that record multiple times a day, every day until you came. So I knew all the words. So I, I'm, <laughs> I'm underneath you singing um, badly, I'm sure, but you, you threw the mic down, let me sing a line from Take the Time. I thought oh, wow. I was a rock star for a minute. <laughs> And then <laughs> and the stage and had did this, I go, hey, wait, wait. <laughs> actually, yeah, your eyebrows did wow, go. Wow, that's, like, oh, that's right on, good. buddy. I'm yeah. sure 30 years from now, I'm going to talk to that guy about this record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Wow. That crazy? There was a big post in the middle of that, that, um, at the stage. So you couldn't see Portnoy very well. He was com- almost mm. completely blocked. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know if you, uh, anyway, so that would, that night was like, wow. Cause you guys were on like, you know, it, and we came to expect that, that what we heard on the record, we were going to, going to hear live. Right. But that was that right. period that you're talking about where you were playing smaller clubs. You're mm-hmm. getting kind of good crowds, but not like, um, monster crowds. Um, no. and it was just after when, um, pull me under started to just like, MT, at least in our market, MTV, radio stuff all the time. Right, right. Yeah, it, it was around the time that things were, were kicking. So then that goes to prove then that it was probably late November that I was over in Connecticut or something like that. Because if I yeah. was there November 6th, yeah. Anyway. Over on the East End. But um, I, got a, I got a cool story for you, though. Yeah. About Im- images. Okay. So when we were recording the album, at one point, uh, there was another client. I can't remember the, the client. That was coming that was booked to come into Bear Track Studios, which is where we recorded practically every single thing for images uh, on on in that studio uh, for the album. And uh, David Prater once again came out to me and Doug Oberkirker, who was the engineer. Um, they said, oh, hey, James. OK, so in two days, uh, uh, we're going to have to we're going to move this. Uh, you're going to record uh, your vocals in new york city we got to drive in in new york city because we can't be here that day and blah 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 and i said i don't care i i love new york city let's get into new york city and we're not going to really see much you're going to be in a studio i said yeah yeah it's the vibe i love the vibe so let's go so i believe we went into the hit factory uh in new york to record learning to live oh wow so check this out so i'm in I had finished doing uh, um, all the lead, all the lead vocal, and so it was a matter of me. I said, "Hey, I want to take a break, and I'm going to go for a little walk. I'll be back in like 15, 20 minutes, and we can do all the background, all the harmonies, and get her done." And they said, "Yeah, man, we'll order some food too." And I said, "Well, I don't want to sing. I don't want to eat until I'm done singing because that's just not good. You know what that's like." Right. Of course. Yeah. And you're trying to sing and it's like, oh, you're belching all over. the place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, OK, try that again. But anyway, so I'm walking down the hallway of the studio uh, complex and uh, lo and behold, Roger Daltrey is walking. Oh, wow. Me. And I just went, <laughs> wow, Mr. Daltrey, how you doing, man? Yeah. Hey, I'm James. And. It's like, hey man, what's going on here? And he, I, I said, well, I'm here. I'm, I'm recording a song. And I said, actually, we're doing most of the album up at uh, Bear Track Studio in Upstate New York. And he goes, oh yeah, okay. And he says, well, what kind of a band are you guys? And I said, well, like progressive rock, you know, like yes and Rush. And I said, meets uh, kind of like Metallica. I th- I don't know who. I, but I said something like that. I think we're like yeah, yes and Rush. And he goes, oh wow, that's really cool. And I said, so you're here recording. He goes, yeah, I'm doing a solo album. And he says, well, best of luck. I wish you guys the absolute best. Take care, shook hands. And, uh, you know, back then phones weren't what they are today, or I'm sure I would have got a picture with him. Yeah. In a heartbeat. But, uh, yeah, it, it was, he was just so cool. So down to earth, you know, and I'm thinking, holy shit, because I went and saw the who, you sure. know, yeah. and, and they were fantastic on stage. They were just incredible. And, um, and, but just to meet that guy. And then, so I go back into the studio to do all the background harmonies for learning to live. And I was just like, Bleh. you know, <laughs> I yeah. was just so freaking pumped Amped up. Yeah. Oh my God, man. That's and awesome. like, I remember Doug Oberger going, what the hell did you just see? What did you just, what did you do? <laughs> when you rode on those streets? I said, I never even freaking made it to the streets, man. I, was, I never even left the studio. I was just talking to Roger Dolce. Oh, cool. Cool. Right. And that was it. But there's um, a story for you. So, dude, yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, a little, yeah. little, he sprinkled a little like magic dust on you oh, yeah. uh, for those backups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Cool moment in time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is maybe an apocryphal story. I read this on the internet, but uh, is it true that it, I, I know that things were not always like sunny with Prater. Right. <laughs> There's a, an apocryphal 
blocked you guys out of the studio. Is that is that garbage? <laughs> or did that no, happen? say that again? He he what? But he locked he, you guys out he, of the you studio. You cracked up there. You, you I lost your signal. You hear, can yeah. you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, there was this apocryphal story that he lo- at one point locked you guys out of the studio. <laughs> well, put it this way. I'll tell you what. Yeah. He yeah, I guess you could look at it somewhat like that. He he mixed the entire album. Okay. okay. And we were supposed to go in so yeah, he didn't want anybody around when he was doing that. Okay, that's what it is. Right, but okay. it wasn't like kicking our asses out the door and then the big bolts slid into place. It wasn't like that. It's like, okay, guys, you know, I'm gonna get into the mix mode. And, and we were living at a house down in Tompkins Cove. It was about a ten minute drive from Bear Track Studio, and uh, it was a cool little home. And uh, we had a wow, man, what stories there? Holy shit, you know, just <laughs> being young and foolish and crazy guys and stuff. So. Yeah, so he, he mixed the album, and then we, we were called. I think it was Doug who called us, Doug Oberkirk, or called one of, the, one of the guys. Maybe Mike picked it up, or I sure as hell didn't answer the phone. And it was like, come on in and hear, hear the mix, guys. So we were going in with the mindset that we were going in to hear the mix, and that if any tweaks needed to be made, uh, you know, like this or that, uh, then so be it. We'll, we'll just do it there, and we'll, we'll make notes. We get in the studio and we're listening to it and you know, we're all like, Oh shit, this sounds great. And we're like, oh, so where's Doug or where's Doug? Where's David? Oh, he's gone guys. He, he left. He's on a plane. He's on his way to uh, his next gig, his next band that he's going to produce. And we're like, what are you freaking kidding me? Like, what is this it? Like, so we got to like this and yeah. hopefully we will like this. Uh, and there's there's nothing else to be said. Like we're we're done. Like what we get here today is what what it is. Yeah. And Doug's like, yeah, that's the way this is flying, guys. Wow. So uh, <laughs> you know, luckily the album was extremely well produced. I think it was extreme. The production yeah. was great on this album. I know that Mike and rightfully so. Mike uh, was very upset with the uh, the triggering bullshit that was going yeah. on because i mean he's a he's a phenomenal drummer so he's kind of like what what's up with this <laughs> freaking shit going on here you know and uh well hey man it's it's the it's the times it's it's where things are now we're starting to do that you know put on the to to make the drums bigger it's like you don't need to make them bigger just make them sound freaking like from real yeah they, yeah they, and, and his drum set acoustically like when mike would be playing i'd walk into the room and he'd be playing his drum set sound freaking awesome like yeah. it's like you don't need to tweak this thing or put it up on another level, so to speak, uh, sonically. It's already there. Just mic it properly, and you're gonna get that. You're gonna get that. But uh, but aside from that, aside from you know, because it, it 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 just sounded great. It really did as a whole. Yeah. Globally, it, it sounded freaking and awesome. S- and it still holds up. Like it I know does. that I know that drum sound. They they used it. Uh, Peter used it on the Firehouse record um, mm-hmm. that came yeah, well, out about that same time. There you time. go. There yeah. you go. He, he, was, he had just done a Firehouse album be- before he came in Dars. Well, that, you know that? Yeah, I, that must have been the one. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. So he 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 was enamored of this drum approach, and and you yes, guys got was. sucked into it. Yeah, and but, he was a drummer himself, actually. David, so I think that I think though that that um, it's it's too easy to fixate on that piece because. There's, um, there's so much about the record production that, sure. um, you know, help, helps oh it stand God. the test oh. of time. Well, here's uh, the thing. I, I bumped into Neil Sean. Oh, yeah? And he, the first thing he said, James, hey, man, how you doing? Listen, I got to listen to you guys' album. Holy shit. I, I, I kid you not. He said, holy shit. The production on that album is magnificent. I absolutely love it he says i love the songs i love what you guys are he said but man the production i yeah. absolutely love the production on the album so that was <laughs> i was like okay neil wow okay yeah right on thank you yeah john john shared the that opening riff on pull me under he said to get that chorusing they it was all because it was taped back then that mm. they, he played it multiple times and then they changed the tape speed in order to get that so like yeah. there's some creative work that went on there oh before man digital tools were available yeah, absolutely um, he also yeah. told me one time 
uh, not to not to get stuck on Prater, we'll move on. But he said he was playing sure. a solo, and uh, uh, Prater r- ran in and told him to stop it. It sounded too much like Van Halen. <laughs> he said, that, you know, even though the thing he ended up oh, writing he's, he, was he, great, he said, I wish I had that Van Halen solo, solo around somewhere. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, and he was doing that, like, uh, you know, yeah, like you said, we, we can't be just going on about Prater, but. You know, he was doing that. He he was having these controversial moments with Kevin Moore. Oh, is that a right? Keyboard player. And with Mike, you know, and uh, it was it was funny because when we did Images and Words, David and I were like this, like we, we were just getting along and having a good time and shooting the shit. And he just let me go in and do my vocals. Like, I'm not going to tell you. So you sing a C sharp like you like it's just like you you had a yawn. You know, he says, what the hell is going on there? And I go, I don't know. It's just freaking, uh, you know, it's my genetics. My mom and dad gave me these chords. I can't tell you anything beyond that. But uh, but it was funny because he, he would be having his his moments and uh, heated moments with a couple of the other guys. And I was like, wow, not cool. You know, yeah. not, not cool because these guys are phenomenal freaking musicians. Just let them do what they got to do or what they know they're going to do they wrote these songs not you they know yeah. how to th- what it is exactly what they want to put onto it that will make this song and each and every song that follows incredible you know? yeah i mean that's but so be it that yeah so that's it. the thing is is it um even though you guys may have been young career wise the mm-hmm. writing maturity was at a place where it's hard to imagine a producer thinking he's going to come in and make that better um, yeah. And but, you see, he was, he was a great musician himself. So I think that, that he was just thinking, well, he fe- yeah, he felt I'm a not different hearing it like this. I don't hear it like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and steer you where I hear it, you know, yeah. where I think it should go. And that doesn't necessarily work too well in a band like this. Yeah. You know, whereas some of the other bands he worked with, it, it probably was, it was an improvement. Right? Yeah. Pro- pro- yeah. Right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, Got to read the room a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you remember if it's true that Pull Me Under was a kind of a, a late addition to the record? Uh, I remember that they, yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, this, uh, this song was probably one of the latter songs that they had written, um, for images and words, but, uh, is it was always to be on this album it's always gonna be on sound oh absolutely uh there was a bit of a, a, a the the whole uh there was a whole middle section i believe jesus christ why am i even have to think about this that i think had something to do with uh uh no i better not go there because i, I think i'm i'm not going to be accurate about this okay but there was a whole instrumental middle section oh i'm gonna say it and then if i screwed up then fuck it just makes for better entertaining here but i believe that there was a whole middle section that was the mirror within pull me under okay that that ultimately ended up being part of the mirror yeah i think yeah yeah there's uh, go go ahead. ahead no you go ahead well, John said something about there uh, a thing in there um, because the song was originally called Oliver's Twist. Right, right, yeah. Uh-huh. And he said he was like he was trying to remember why, and he said maybe the twist was this <laughs> middle section thing. <laughs> Look at us, we're true. Like, were you guys there? Yes, we were. No, trust me, you're talking to the right guy. We were there. <laughs> I can't even freaking remember some of the things here. What's going on? And uh-huh. you know what's crazy about this, Peter, is that there's there's fans out there that are so fanatical that they would go, no guys, you got it wrong. It was I like know. this, you know? And it was like, what the hell? Who are you? Yeah. What do you do in life? What is it that you do? <laughs> but, uh, but did you know that, that now I don't know if you and John talk about this, but originally we were hoping to have a change of seasons. Oh yeah. On the I first album. That. And the label was like, no flipping way. Are you putting a freaking 20 plus minute song on this album? This is your first album. And then the album, what, clocked in at 58 minutes. No, can we do another song? It's 24 minutes long. Is that okay? You know, we'll do it right at the end. No. But that's they didn't want we, they we, didn't want a double CD. 
Oh my god. Or double double LP. Can you imagine too? Because I mean, we stuck out like a sore thumb. You know, when, it would, well, it would have been when glorious images came for out, fans, was, but yeah, but it gave you a whole another album later. What well, is you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting doings. Um, I wondered. I, I, this is maybe because it's a little bit my experience, but yeah. um, are there? They're all your babies, so you love them all. But are there any of the tunes that when you're do, playing live, you just there's a little more gas in the tank for it? Um, from, from images or from any any of the? Well, albums? it could be from anything. Like it, uh, I'm I'm from images. It would be cool, and not because you think it's better or anything. Maybe it's just mm-hmm. it's uh, thematically it, it touches you or. I don't know. I'm just wondering. I have I've had songs when I've been live where like I I'm I love it all, but when I get to that song, I'm really happy because and I've got some extra gas for it. Oh boy, oh. not really. There's so many songs. Well, I know that whenever we did "Surrounded," I loved doing that song, and, oh, and yeah. that w- always hit me big. You know, I just absolutely loved singing that song. Uh, not that we did it very often, but when we did play "Scarred." Uh, from a oh, from yeah. awake, I freaking love that because there's so many different uh, parts of my voice. I'm here, I'm using, you know, like the yeah. aggression, the highs, the lows, the subtlety, the the silkiness, and just being very expressive and evocative. And so uh, that song kind of touched on so many facets of of my voice that in in that little bit of time, well. I mean, people would say you had a lot more time in a dream theater song than you do in a pop song. Well, that's right. Thank God. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I can but, go uh, breathe but, for a second. Yeah. But it, it that would be one of them. Um, you know, whenever we it's funny because it, it does depend on my mood. Finally, Free is another song that mm. I always, always love singing. And uh, it really kind of hit hit the mark for me for something that just touched deep inside and uh, just because of the way that it begins and where it ends up it's just so dynamic and and uh and the song itself is 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 eclectic to me like there's so many different yeah. styles going on and then that then again that allows me to be touching upon so many different uh vocal uh, stylings so right. yeah it's yeah cool. yeah um so with um in the in the record itself we'll just transition to some specific parts there's sure. in in pull me under there's at at about the three minute mark you get into the watch the sparrow fly, oh, yeah. falling and and it's like yep. it's n- here, up up you go right. to this place and then everything's kind of up there yep. um you do this and i've been not not as a i don't mean this to be self reflective but I've been, uh, I've got some stems from the record and I've been singing them um, mm-hmm. as a way of, to vocalize. Yeah, okay. Uh, and one of the things that it, this exercise has done for me, James, is give me just yet an, a deeper appreciation for what you do. Because right. when, I, when I hear how you deliver these songs on the record, it's, it's, um, it's really easy to think, oh, well, he sings super high or... Uh, yeah. Or it sounds really great, you know. Maybe it's a nice tone or whatever. It's a completely different thing when you are in front of a mic, trying mm-hmm. to deliver this. Uh, you do it with there's the with ease. It, it I mean, whether or not it is easy is yeah, one it was. thing. Way it you was. sound is. You notice like, I use the word "it was." It was. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> no, it was. Hire? So like all that, uh, all that stuff was just. I don't just know. I'm, just, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you point blank. It was. It was easy for me to. Well, sing that's it. the way that you know. You know. There's, there's, and I mean, there's a couple of different places I want to draw attention to it. But yeah. you, the way it sounds is it sounds effortless, and mm-hmm. it sounds. Um, but it also sounds really, really powerful. Uh, and then it yeah. has this. It has this tone, this fullness of tone that I'm. Um, I'm at a loss to to think of another singer. <clears throat> who achieves this particular tone. They all have their own thing. So I'm not trying to say yeah, there's course. not other great singers. They, they, everybody has their own yeah. thing, but this is your Many thing, dude. Singers. Like there's yeah. only, there's, uh, there's only you that I know that has this particular um, fullness and resonance when they get into some of these um, notes. So mm. the, all of these things together, and then there's the whole lushness. There's this, there's this handful of tools 
that that arrive in this yeah. record mm -hmm. and and when i listen to it and then when i try and reproduce it just as a way to try and learn as a vocalist it's like wow he the the way that it's not just that you did it it's the way you do it um right right well you know what it was funny here here we go yeah so, I, no, uh, wait a minute. Did I interrupt you? Did you? No, no, yeah, I was going to about ask. If you're going somewhere, then I'm going to let you go there. No, you go ahead. Okay. So I still remember, you know, when um, I first, first met the guys and I was hanging out because Mike Portnoy and John Mayung picked me up at the airport. And then I actually stayed and lived with Mike at his place, who was living with his brother, Rennie. Um, at, they had this cool little house that they were living at. I believe it was his grandmother's house at one point or something. Like that. I don't know, man. Don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure that was the case. So Mike sat down with me uh, in the living room. And he goes, you know, this is one of the songs that we, we want you to demo while you're down here. And it was Take the Time. And, and Mike was one of the guys in the band that was into rap music back then. And, and, um, and he said, you know, like, here it is. Just let me catch my breath. I've heard the promises, right? And I was going into that, right? And he was like, okay, and then it goes up here. So what do you think? Like, where I start going crazy. And I'm like, yeah, okay. No, man, I, I can do that. I, he goes, so you know what you want to do for this song? I go, I know exactly what I want to do. So, you know, you're talking about the lushness and then getting in the in some angst, you know, into the yeah. voice and then making it nice and clean and operatic, but but very powerful. Well, Take the Time was a great, great example of that on this album where I was able to say, OK, you know, look at uh, rhythmically. I'm going to be there 100 percent because I played drums for 12 years. So yeah. I get everything and I get every feel. It doesn't matter what time signature it's in. I'm going to feel it. I feel it instantly, instantly. I feel it. And because Mike was like going, holy shit, like, how are you feeling this? Like, what are you counting? I'm going, I'm not counting. Dude, first of all, if I started counting, I'd be a cluster, ba -ba -ba -ba, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I said, so I will, I will not, I have to feel something in order to get behind it 100%. And so, you know, this is one of the moments on the album where I, I think a lot of, a lot of who became fans and, and people who, didn't know us at the time when they heard this song they were like what just freaking happened yeah. because it starts out so groovy you know and it, and i was like i remember the first time i heard that song i was like holy shit guys this song is freaking brilliant this is a brilliant brilliant song and they're like cool man and then when i started hearing the melodies and where it was going and holy shit i'm like yippee i yo the sky's the limit Right. Yeah. I can just go freaking ballistic on this song. And, you know, it, it was it that then to go from a song like that, like how I had mentioned earlier, into a song like Surrounded. So all of a sudden, you know, I'm in I'm, I'm able to get into all these little subtleties and, and embellishments and nuances uh, that really make a song become that much more deep and you and you become enamored with it right because yep. of all that those these little changes throughout that keep it going somewhere that's almost unpredictable but you kind of get the sense you don't yeah. have to really think about it but you're feeling it going somewhere and that was the brilliance of this this album because when i heard these songs i was like what <laughs> what the hell is going on here because this is a godsend I can't wait to do this stuff because when they originally asked me to come down and do this, this audition, they had sent me the first album when dream and day unite. And, you know, I was hearing that and I was going, wow, you know, I can definitely see the rush influence going on on this, this album, which rush was a huge, huge, and still is a huge band uh, to me as far as inspiration. And, um, and then when they, they started to, get me i think they got me four songs from images and words that they were they were wanting me to to, to get into and a change of seasons by the way mm. which i also demoed when i was down there those five days um you know it, it was just like like these guys like they're practically babies like what were they 22 23 years old and they're writing stuff like this mm -hmm. 
this guy, this is an anomaly. You know, you guys are freaks, (laughs) (laughs) but I want to be part of the freak show. So here we go, you know? And, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's little things like that, not little things, big things like that. I should say on this album where, you know, I think that's what really just kind of put this in its own little niche, so to speak because of these, these, these songs and, yeah. and throughout the album, you're going, okay, now where are they going? What the hell's going on here? You know, you were just talking about under a glass moon and Hey, I 100% and I've said it several, several times when we've been out on tour, when we're playing that song, I go, this is one of the greatest guitar solos of all time, hands down, you know? And it was great when you said that on his list, on the list there that, that John made it on that list. I think he should have been, in the top five, but, but whatever, that's my, that's my thing. But, uh, you know, I agree. He's, he's just an, well, he is freaking. Amazing. I think he said about that Period. too. That originally he had to work at that one because what was going on underneath it was so, Oh, so changing so much. And so, so unique that he had to right. really work to, to weave something on top of it. But ultimately when that happened, it's like, it became, you know, but you think about that, Peter. You think about the fact that the way that you hear that song now and the way that you hear John soloing, you don't even think about the complexities underneath. I'm not saying that you're not hearing it yeah, and you're not feeling it, but because of the guitar solo that he created, it's fluid. That's right. It just feels like you, you could be listening to, you know, Back in Black, and then you listen to this song and you get... you play that solo part and you wouldn't think like what what the hell's going on here somebody just threw me into a altered verse right I, uh, so and it, yeah it just feels good exactly feels natural and it's you know and that and was that's, his brilliance he was always able to do that and he still does it today he still the does melodies it. that he creates on that guitar are <laughs> it, i you know and and John, if John was here, if we had been able to do this together, and I wish we had been able to do it the other day there, Peter. No worries. Um, but, uh, you know, I, John will tell you, there's, there's countless times that I've come up to him and I go, okay, what the hell did you do there? Because, wow, man, that, that just <laughs> freaking is so moving. It's, you know, it's because of his feel, his melody. I mean, technically, yeah, is he brilliant? Yeah, he is. He's one of the best out there. But the fact is, is that it's be, it's it's like listen case okay, so another guitar player that is similar to that is neil sean you know he, mm. he's technically brilliant but his melodies that was yeah. one thing that i gravitated that that just it was magnetic to me when i was listening to journey was holy shit this guy's melody sense is phenomenal yeah and john's right. the same way john is exactly like that you know yeah i i in fact i i told him i think he, at this point he's got the, the it's the petrucci signature when he plays oh. it's not it's not the down. speed um i yep. mean he has that and he uses it but yep. w- he's got a signature when he's communicating melodically that is uniquely his own yeah and in your former point is was something i was actually going to bring up and, and i'll bring it up when i get to this the tune but um there's uh, and <laughs> again i noticed this because i'm sitting over there you know trying to sing the tunes and then I'll stop singing. And as the music is continues to play till I can get back and pause it, I'm like, it, 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 it kind of freaks me out how much stuff is going on underneath what you're singing. Yeah. Like, like yeah. not just a little, like polyrhythms. <laughs> I know. And like, uh, so there's one, it, when you said that part of the way that you're, it's so accessible to you because you are, or were a drummer, it, that suddenly makes made sense to me because mm-hmm. if you don't have some sort of, pretty um advanced sense of rhythm um mm-hmm. especially because some, some of the stuff's in odd time but just competing yeah. with all of those things and trying to to maintain a melodic line that yeah. is more fluid on top mm-hmm. of this mm-hmm. um is not that's as like that's a second level technique uh-huh. yeah and, um, and i mean you, you got to be able to feel these things natural or can, can you imagine it would just seem so robotic it would seem so forced yeah uh and if you, you miss know, them then it would seem it would seem really herky jerky like that's the technical yeah term, herky jerky. Uh, absolutely yeah herky but, <laughs> jerky is, is a perfect way to put it you know it would, because, okay, now uh, wait a minute yeah, right now <laughs> you yeah. know and it, it would just be it'd be you'd be in pain going oh my god 
Okay, is he going to nail? No. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. You missed that one. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It's just it's just something. And and it's like I said when Mike was like, okay, so how are you counting this? I'm like, no way, Mike. <laughs> Rick, I know you can do that. You can do that hands down. But hey, shit. No, it's not going to happen. And and I and I well, know that's in your for brain. The fact that, that John Mayung, he'll be doing that. like, Or, or even... Even Mike Mangini these, these days, he'll be going like, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm like, I would freaking blow up. Yeah. My, my, my head would just go, you know, well, I mean, it's in your brain. he's up against it. Those guys are contending with like, they've got their own freaking beasts, you know, and, and they've seen to how they know how to handle it and to how to tame that, yeah. that monster, you know, so to speak. But to me, it's like no way, man. Just let me float like a freaking, I don't know, like a fairy or an angel up on top. You give me my fairy dust and just let me go with it. Because if you get me into that mode where it's it's all about you know the counting and uh, no, I lost. your, your instincts sheep. there are are, um, are really good. And it it what happens is the yeah. the vocal part that you deliver mm-hmm. kind of makes sense of the rest of it. Um, like it, it would be a really cool instrumental record without the vocal on it, but it would have right. a completely different personality uh-huh. and arguably far less accessible. Right. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. There's a yeah. section. Um, I think it's a fan favorite section. It certainly is of mine in another day. Um, mm. It's mm-hmm. the, it's the part where, you know, where you get into the, they took pictures of our dreams. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And John even said the other day, this is one of his favorite things that you've ever done um mm-hmm. it's it's uh because it is simultaneously really powerful powerfully sung but mm-hmm. it's also you you captured what john had intended to be captured in delivering it in a, as a sense of sort of a sweet nostalgia right um, and yep. um I, I wondered like when you went into to to, to sing that mm-hmm. um was it I, I guess i'm looking for like any sort of tidbit on how you landed what is like for let me give you the let me tell you why i say this i've seen covers of this tune and i've even seen Mm -hmm. females do this cover and females have the advantage of they already can kind of get higher than guys can usually yeah of course nobody nobody delivers it this the way you do so i'm i'm just interested in like um you know you told me once that you do a lot of prep in terms of like um the the lyric and how to express it yeah this is one of the great examples of you doing something with all of your great ability and it is both powerful and beautiful so i I wanted to hear you thank you anything you can say about this passage because this for me after the big choruses on pull me under when i and this is the second track when i heard this bit of singing i was like that's that's another level like right well thank you thank you well you and I both know that those lyrics are about his father, yeah. right? You know, and, um, you know, like, uh, John's father had recently, uh, overcome. Well, at that point he, he had, uh, overcome cancer. Uh, I, I don't know what, what kind, but, but, you know, he was very fortunate, uh, to overcome it. And so when I sat down with John and he started to, to explain to me what this was all about and why he wrote this lyric and that, I mean, that, that freaking hit me right upside the head. And I was like, wow, you know, this is, I have to really wrap my head around these words and what they would mean to me if this was my father. And, and that's what I'm always doing with any, any lyric. It, it's that it has to become me. It, it's mm-hmm. something that basically, you know, like, let's get to the point where this is, a story that i want to be told telling uh not the lyricist it becomes my story and it becomes my experience and if it can become my story and my experience personal experience then i don't even have to you know it's not contrived right it's just it's just becomes something that is uniquely how you and i would just interpret uh a, a kind of uh tragic beauty so to speak right yeah. is the way that 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 song kind of hit me and um that's that's how i went about going into this and getting behind the mic and had the the lights very very low you know you know, mike portner has 
uh, footage of this. Oh, uh, wow. Like, I think several uh, moments throughout the creation of this album uh, video, you know, he's just, he's the, he was always the librarian of, of the, uh, the band and, and he has so many incredible things, uh, you know, from our, from our history. And, and, and so I, I don't know if I can't recall if there was a camera in front of me when I was singing this, uh, this particular song, but I still remember saying to Doug, Doug, bring down the lights. I want it to be almost pitch black. And, um, for when I sing this song, just keep the lights on the lyrics. And, and back then lyrics, <laughs> We're on paper <laughs> right now. Oh, no, no. We, that's right. We printed them out. That's right. We were able to get somebody to print them out for us. But, uh, you know, whereas now it's just like you throw it up on the screen, right? You right, right. Tell, read yeah, away like from the screen. Or something. You know? Oh, my God. Yeah. So, well, not that I ever, I've never, I'm talking about in the studio, right? Like, yeah, that's what know, I mean, too. You know me, like never live if I had a teleprompter. I don't know what that, well, no, that's not true. When we did, uh, when we did uh, Number of the Beast, uh, Iron Maiden, when we covered that song, that album, I had to have a teleprompter. Uh, that's a whole other story, man. The freaking guy, I think he was from, uh, we did it in, where the hell would we do it? In Spain or Paris or something? So he was of another language, and, and he's supposed to be scrolling down the, the, the words. Or maybe that was the Metallica. <laughs> maybe it was when we were covered Metallica. Oh, my God. And the freaking guy didn't understand any of the wording. So here's me reading the teleprompter and the freaking words aren't moving. <laughs> and I'm like, looking I'm, sorry, I'm literally, I'm singing going, hello, you know? And then he finally gets somebody ran over and they freaking, they, they corrected it. I'm like, oh my gosh, James, oh, that's the funniest visual in me. the world. Oh, All yeah. the trouble no. to have a teleprompter, but the guy who's reading the lyrics, <laughs> I got your back, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, bullshit. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> but I I still remember getting back. <laughs> That's the comic sideline uh, sidebar. <laughs> anyway, so when I when I went in there, yeah, I brought the lights down, and and that that song, you know. So for you to hear that when I'm singing that section or, or any of the sections of the, you know, that song, it, it's yeah. it's cool that that it was uh, felt exactly which is the way that I intended it to be felt and that, and, um, you know, and saying, I still remember like, you know, like you were saying, John was commenting on that. And I still remember him coming in going, Oh dude, high five and gave me a big hug and just like, Holy shit. And you have no idea what this means to me. And I said, Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. John. I know That's, exactly uh... what it means to you. You know, fast That's... forward to my latest solo album. <clears throat> Right. And Sunset Rune, uh, the lyric that I wrote about my brother, Bruce. Yeah. You know, uh, passing away from pancreatic cancer. I mean, it's the same. It, it, you know, uh, that's where I was 30 years ago singing that song. And yeah. that's where I was when I sang Sunset Rune here behind those curtains. Uh, you know, it, it was very moving for me and, and very powerful. And uh, each it situation was just something that just freaking rocked my world, you know. It is a gift you have to, um, and not all vocalists can do this, can can place themselves inside the emotion of a song uh, in order right. to have it, um, you know, express it, humanly resonate, expressed, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah they, that's yeah. just. Um, yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And, and so you, there's another through line. Uh, it's something you're still doing uh, and that you began doing. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's another testament on this record. Yeah. Uh, to that ability um because you know there's there it, it can be challenging for a vocalist if it's not their melody that they wrote or their lyrics that they wrote yep. to come in and embrace them to make them yep. their own mm -hmm. um that I, I know a lot of really great vocalists who can right. come and like go through the motion and deliver a performance but, right. it, it, but it's not like for, at the at the risk of sounding a bit um it sounds plenty arrogant yeah yeah it just doesn't it's not musical right right yeah musical is a great way to put it yeah so that's true that's you know, true it, there's a there's a great photo on the internet i don't know when it's from but i choose to I've, I've given it my own backstory but it's a picture of mike portnoy kissing you on the cheek oh yeah 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 and i like it when i see that picture james what i what i read into it is you know i know that take the time was written 
three years, like between the first thing and, and, and there was all of the band changes and loot management yeah, yeah. and all the stuff. And I see that as, as after you came, I, I think Mike realized the blessing of your participating coming and being part of that. And when I yeah. see that picture, I see this, like this, this man, just like so grateful that you're part of his life and part of this musical thing. So mm -hmm. I see that picture and I, I don't, it could be something else. It could have even been hijinks, but I, I see no, that no. and I think, oh mm -hmm. man. Yeah. Like the, there's a million singers out there, but it's hard to imagine this level of music and uh, songwriting and everything they were doing without a voice like yours to deliver mm -hmm. it. Well, I think, yeah, I think well, Mike knew you. that. Yeah. I, I still remember that, that moment. And, and you know, like uh, everything w we were so young and, 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 and so uh, thrilled with everything that was going on. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, Mike and I were great friends. I mean, we were, you know, and, and I think there was that unspoken uh, language that, that we just really appreciated one another immensely, you know, yeah. and, um, and, you know, and Mike, Mike was, you know, he was just a funny guy. Like he, he would do stuff and you go like, what, what the hell did you just do? There? <laughs> you know? And uh, kind of keep it light and fun and, and, and stuff like that. But at the same time, be a very serious musician um, yeah. and, and very, very, very dedicated to not only who he, he's been known for, uh, for several years around the world as an incredible drummer. Uh, but beyond that, making sure that everything that we were all about as far as dream theater, the band, uh, he, he didn't let anything go. You yeah. Know, uh, on, you know, it, it had to be, uh, everything was notarized, so to speak, you know, and, well, and, and for, and for a purpose. And you guys, um, you know, it, it, everybody was, everybody's kind of a blessing to each other in, yeah. in, in this, in this effort. Couple yeah. more questions for you, dude. The the um, Metropolis, of course, is a, a fan favorite, um, and I you know, know you've told me that very often it's a it's a closer, which kind of it oh, blows yeah. my mind a little bit because yeah. that section in the middle where you do that ascent and then you're just again you're kind of floating on these really big notes, and, and then you hold. There's one great note. Mm. I, I I I don't know if it's a high C, but you hold it for like ten seconds before you they drop into the instrumental section oh it's a yeah, very, yeah yeah you know, you know what i mean yeah Swimming I in a lake of fire. yeah it's probably it's probably yeah c sharp yeah right so yeah um that's a really challenging yeah um section to sing yeah like again on the record you just make it sound like it's my tuesday <laughs> well and you know what to be to be quite honest well like, i mean if you if you like you were down at the rafters my friend in Salt Lake City. I so was there. You know that when I was singing this stuff live too, it was it was there. It was just it 100%. was it was in fact there was a bit more freaking because I was just psyched to be on stage with these guys and and to be in front of people, whether it was fifty people or you know, however many, it, it didn't matter. My blood was just racing through me like jet fuel. And uh so yeah, you know, it, like I got to tell you, Peter. You know, and you're pointing out some some fantastic moments, and but there was all the other moments leading up to that that for note, sure. and the moments after that note, and and you know, it, for, you got to you got to think. One, well, I'm I know you've thought about it because I can tell by everything you're talking about in the voice, and you are like I said to you, and I'm not just saying this because this is your show, but you are a great vocalist yourself. Oh, so. You. For me, when this stuff was, you know, at initially being brought to my attention and where, where I was, what I was going to be able to do with these songs because of the melodies, because of the words, because of the music behind it, it, it was, you have to remember like, man, I was absolutely ecstatic. I, I was like, I can't wait to get behind that freaking mic and blow it up in fact i did blow a microphone up did, did you did you know about that one no i didn't hear that okay so check this shit out okay so you know like we were talking about take the time yeah, yeah. no all that stuff when i was singing that and i hit that that part and all of a sudden well it was done and i'm like fuck we, had, we have a power outage something like that 
and Doug Oberkirker is in there with David Prater, and they're like, they look up and they go, what? And so they come out and they're, they're looking at the cables and they're going and they're running through all the way, you know, the snake and the snake where everything plugs in, you know that. Sure. And, and, and everywhere. So they finally come out and they go, I was singing in a C12 microphone, C12. Yeah. So it's a tube mic, great big tube mic, $10,000 mic. Okay. Or this is what they tell me at the time. They take the mic off. They put in, they said, we're going to put another mic on. Right. And, Lo and behold, they just plug it in. I go, dup, 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 and they go, like, holy, wait a sec. So they get the mic checked out, and I blew out the diaphragm in the microphone. They go, you freaking blew that freaking diaphragm out. That's never happened before. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's funny because John Petrucci, when, when I was telling that, that story one time, he's going, like, yeah, you got a really loud, loud voice. My mother had this thunderous voice. I still remember if we did something wrong and I could be upstairs and she'd go, well, you know, my first name's Kevin. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> she'd, yell, <laughs> she'd be way downstairs in the kitchen. So it's coming all the way through the house, up the stairs towards my bedroom. And I, it would just be like, she was standing right there. Beside, it would be oh, so wow. loud. And I I'd come down. What? She goes, did you not do what I asked you to do? Oh my God. <laughs> Sounds like a mom. So, so I got, you know, I, because my dad didn't have this big loud voice, but my mom, oh my God, man, freaking, you know, mm -hmm. I could be halfway across town and she, if she needed me, she'd probably still be able to reach me, you know? Well, I heard yeah. Rich Chicky say the same thing in a, on a YouTube video. He was talking about, um, vocal, particular vocal mic. And he said, you know, tra we tra I tracked James Labrie or have and yeah. um he's got a really james got a really loud voice so we're yeah. looking for a mic that can handle that <laughs> <laughs> because that's the other thing too is that it the 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 natural compression in 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 microphones some of them don't take it that's why yeah. uh you know i've i've gone on to when i discovered the blueberry mic by blue blue yeah. microphones i was just like oh my god this microphone's incredible i can be like going at it at 110 decibels or singing really soft you know and very very light and it captures it and the mojave uh the the m1000 uh, i think uh, M1000. The same, yeah the same the same thing I, I just absolutely love that microphone good for your voice yeah yeah but but you know uh, you know this to be true but but every microphone sounds different with every singer so exactly. every every singer has their go-to microphone where they're like, no, that 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 completely picks up on all the frequencies of my voice. So, you know, I always said to a vocalist, and, and I don't know if you've done this, Peter, but this is what this is what I say. You want to check out a microphone, you want to make sure that this microphone was meant for you. So yell into the mic, take your heads off, put your put your hands right in front of you and go. Same thing. Yeah, see what it does. The other way you can do about it is you, you, you hey, and then, you, hey, and if yeah, sounds, yeah. this mic is pretty good, by the way, but if it sounds exactly the same acoustically, if you're getting that back, that's great. But yeah. if you go on, wait a minute, that, that's got some synthetics to it, that it didn't sound the same when I did this, then don't go. Don't even yeah. go any further. Don't waste any more time on it, man. Go to the next microphone and the next microphone and just keep going. And I'm sure a lot of singers are out there. Well, I don't have 15 microphones to choose from in one session. Yeah, but you're going to, you pretty much know, you know, when you're singing through an SM58, right? The go-to, right? The, yes. the go-to rock and roll microphone. Um, does it, does that feel good to you? Or do you have to go to another, another right. microphone? So right. it, it's just, it's just a question of, hearing your natural acoustics and are you hearing those natural acoustics through the microphone right yeah off on another tangent here no are. that's that's valuable because a lot of people who who yeah. watch and see, see the show are you know musicians and right. and vocalists right. so that's that's valuable stuff and it goes back to like being able to capture um having a mic to transition to capture yeah. some of this really really aggressive stuff yeah. you're singing because it's not just that it's 
pitch wise a, a, a challenge or or at the time not really a challenge for you but that it was sitting so high um but also that it's done with this tone and this and this power that is mm. that is so evident in the yeah. recording and so in a song like metropolis like and i wanted to to, to call back to your former point i didn't mean to sort of cheapen the four the first part of the song because there's an amazing build and there's all this setup because it's a nar narrative song it's it's abstractly narrative but it's narrative mm. and you mm -hmm. do all of this this early work to set up you know a, sm a smile of dawn blah blah and and to get us into yeah. this moment so that yeah. when you finally start to generate more of the drive um mm -hmm. there's a base you know like we are on the journey and yeah. the, the cut those first few dances are death and deceit so there's you know there's some energy and emotion in them yep and then you do the big vocal section that i can't remember how long it is um uh, it's like 60 or 90 seconds and it's just all like you kind of up there going at it right. and then you drop the right. guys do their thing for a few minutes yeah and then you come back in and you, thank you, god yeah i know I, I I know, man. I, I just had to think. Like, okay, guys, so it's happy. yours. <laughs> it's yours. I'm going back to towel off and get some water. <laughs> I'm going to get a quick nap. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. But yeah. And you no deserve kidding. it. You yeah. deserve it after that. that singing that oh part. God. I'm just like, I don't yeah. know who wrote it, but uh, <laughs> whoever wrote it. either. Yeah, I, think, I think John John wrote the melody for that. He wrote, so he wrote he the lyrics for sure. So that's, I mean, that yeah, just tells you, like, if they were yeah. writing melodies like that, then yeah. they they were immediately mm -hmm. constraining the pool of vocalists that they could ever hire. <laughs> oh, frick. No right? doubt about I mean, it. if they had 200 vocalists, that's the number that floats around. Yeah, right. It, right. Was, not, it was not hard for them to whittle that down. Because no, I mean, just throw that song at them and see yes. what happens. Well, even even take the time because, like, just all the right. many motives all the different within parts. that, right? Yeah, you know, that's right. It's, it's it's so it it's just. And yeah. at the end of this tune, when you when they when you do come back on stage, you've had a drink. Yeah, it, it gets pretty quickly back into like, oh, here we go. And at the very very end of that, there are yeah. two um, high C's. Right, right, right. Yeah, and yeah. you hit them, not yeah. just hit them, but you you hit them with this sort of loftiness and 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 with vibrato. And the vibrato is only a very short period. You're not stabbing them. Like yeah, there's yeah. a lot, there's a lot like if you deeply listen to it that's going on here that is like just next level vocal stuff. Mm -hmm. Um and so uh, this is like for me, I, I guess one of the invitations I might make to people who might see this, who yeah. um ever call to question James Labrie, it would be, mm. you know what? Yeah. You should try singing this. Yeah, right. You right. should try singing this just once in your right. best condition, in your bathroom with mm -hmm. the shower on, and you think you're warmed up and you think you're all that. You try singing yeah. this. Yeah. Um, because and I, then I go think, out for two years and sing it live. And then right, which was on, practically what what that tour was was like you know we were out. I don't know. I think it was eighteen months or something like that. But so even if it was two, two weeks. Yeah. Doing doing yeah. 10, 12 shows over two yeah, weeks. Yeah. Oh shit. And back then, man, we were doing like <sighs> wow, we were doing uh at least I remember doing six shows in a row and shit like that. And then you have them one day off, and then doing five shows in a row and having one day off. And you got to remember too that we were doing when we were on images and words, we only had one dream and day unite and images and words. So we were doing right most of one dream and day unite. And uh, if you recall my whole version of the Killing Hand, so I was singing that every night. You just going freaking nuts every night on that stuff, and uh, and then going into images and words, and uh, so that's what I was doing. But you know, because I was the singer that I was at that particular moment in time, that that, that didn't matter to me. Yeah. Uh, one time on on the images tour. I got a wicked, wicked sinus infection. And it was so funny because we had just played Toronto. And um, then the next day I woke up with absolutely, because I remember I was really sick, but I went out that night in Toronto and I sang like to the gods that night. And I was like, Oh, so I can have a, you know, like, cause the doctor told me, he says, you got a wicked, you got a, uh, a sinus infection. You're dripping into your throat. He says, I'm, I'm amazed that you're still singing that you even have a voice right now. And he says, I'm going to get you on these antibiotics and blah, blah, blah. You got to start. So I'd started to take them, 
But the the morning after the Toronto show, I woke up and I had absolutely no voice. And so we had to cancel one show. I took, what was it? So it allowed me three days rest. Mm. And then we just continued. I was Kept fine. Going. Three days later, I was fine singing again. And, and we just continued on for another thousand years. Well, but I, yeah, I you know, it, it, was, to it. it was crazy. It was crazy. Because when you, I'm going to read it real quick for nostalgia's sake, but when you played rafters and I saw you, mm -hmm. you, you opened with Metropolis. You did Under oh, yeah, Glass yeah. Moon, uh, Only mm -hmm. a Matter of Time, Surrounded, Pull Me Under, Get You Jam, Moon Bubbles, oh, Another yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was hand. the little instrumental thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. Another Day, Killing Hand, Take the Time, and your encore was Wait for Sleep and Learning to Live. Yep. That's the set I saw. There you go. And every night. Every boom, night. Boom, 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 boom. Every yeah. night. And I told you this before, but I'm going to say it yeah. again. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, a lot of um, folks who tend to have tons of opinions on the internet about voice don't understand is that yeah, in the I, big, I, I, I can't read into any of that toxicity anymore. You know, I got slammed up against the wall and freaking so for so many years because of you know my vocal uh, problems from my rupture and all that shit, and it got to the point where it's like if I keep reading this, I'm going to go absolutely well, freaking mental because these people are just fuck. They have no idea. They have no idea. They're 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 fucking gremlins. They you know don't what I mean they don't understand voice. They don't um they don't understand. I don't think live performance. The the thing I that I wanted to remind folks is there's a thing in um in opera which you could argue is you know one of the most challenging art vocal art forms, and they will rarely do more than eight or nine high C's in a night. It's I was a just going to say, and they will rarely go beyond a forty minute actual. Right vocal and and, any, and and more than 40 minutes and a, yeah. a, a, a majority of the, the song is not even in sort of a middle place um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so exactly th th this is the thing i try when i'm talking music and voice with my friends i said the mm -hmm. thing because they all know i'm a big fan of yours and i said i'm a fan right. for sure like i'll fanboy like anybody else yeah. but i did train like and i do i do yeah, work I at it to understand yeah. voice because it it, it it matters to me. And so when I listen to, to so much of your catalog, the, the thing that's unique is that I will hear, I'll, I, and I'll point this out with other songs. I won't use names here for to be discreet, but there's other tunes I'll listen to where the vocalist gets into a place and it sounds like this hugely impressive note. Oh, wow, man, he's really getting up there and it's right. strong and all this. Right. And, but if you actually yeah. like discern what the note is, it's not a very impressive note. Sounds right. cool. And the right. rule of cool is a, is a, is that's a real thing. If it sounds cool, then cool. Yeah. But if you're just measuring, it's subjective on, too. Yeah. It, yeah, it is subjective. Yeah, but the thing sure. I'll say is the thing that one of the things that that I try and educate them on is like a, a, a vocalist like James, he's got songs like Under Glass Moon is a good example. Mm. Where you start that song is yeah. where some guys are starting to get into their biggest notes. <laughs> and so I know um, I've, I've done interviews with with other major vocalists like uh, opera vocalists that's what they'll do look at you realize that you're starting at the top for some of us and this is just the beginning of the ride and i'm like yep yes I like that first remember. one tell yeah. me yeah you're already, yeah, yeah what he why is he starting right. there yeah what headroom exactly. has he got left but you see this was this was what was thrown at me and i can only imagine the other singers that were auditioning where it's kind of like uh, can we kind of like change the key of that song right no this is the way it was but yeah, you know, but go on, go like, you well, were. that's my, that's my point is that, is that, um, I, mm -hmm. uh, it's that, yeah, sure. I try not to participate in, in the, the stuff very much, but when I do, yeah. I usually just say, look guys, we should just ground, there should be some, um, grounding in benchmarks. And, and one of the things that we all should just be really pleased about is that you've got a vocalist that attacks songs and, and, and willing to, to take on songs that mm -hmm. start in these like go pick your next favorite band and there's right. some good vocalists out there but a lot Great of times yeah. when they're getting into these these notes that you think sound i was listening to one just the other day off a really pretty big recent progressive metal record and it's a great singer it's a great cut but i was yep. listening to some of the big notes and then when i just paused it and then i sang the note i'm like oh that's easy that's right. an easy note easy right. note and yeah, then I yeah. would go and I was, and then I go over to my mic and I'm, I'm just doing, trying to improve myself by listening back to what you're doing. Right, right. And I'm like, oh, 
that that's about where he started that song. It just it just kills me, man. Yeah. I just kills yeah. me. And I I know that yeah. I've said this before, but when when people see this, I I want them I want them to hear it because right. um I yeah. think it's an important distinction that is lost, and, I, and it's your own fault, James, because you make <laughs> it you, it, you yeah. make it sound so easy. No, well, uh, I I didn't know any other way. I know. No, I know. No. And, you know, when when you talk to this is one of the, the great things is that when ever I had met uh, somebody that I, you know, I there was the adulation there, you know, it, it was uh, whether it was a uh, Ronnie James deal or Robert Plant when I met him and uh, and th these guys, you know, when you when you'd have a brief moment with them and just go, you know, so when you when you go about your singing and you and even with bruce dickinson you know like i've known him for since 1995 and um and the thing is, is that they just they'll say to you the first thing they'll say to you is i just do this man like it just this is just something that you know when i have the song in front of me and the melody and the words i just it's like you and I having a conversation right now. What yeah. comes out, it naturally comes out. And I can go there because I know that I can naturally go there and make it impactful, right? So it's something that will, you know, you be able to walk away with and, and, and really appreciate. But, but there's, there's, no, there's no recipe. There's no, well, there is a recipe in the way that you know that you always get there. But there's no magic you know yeah. there's no magic pill or anything like that it was just for most of these kinds of singers um including myself it, it was just naturally there it's natural and it was just something that that we were capable of doing without too much thought there is the, the thought in in what we talked about earlier is that you know in your development your formative years of, that, that that's what really matters i think to anybody yeah. in any instrument it's the amount of time that you put into it then is what you get back tenfold later. I think that's a really good point is there's, there's all of your natural ability, but as you're in those formative years, yes. um, putting in the work um, pays mm -hmm. dividends in later. Absolutely. I mean, a, a couple other things you do when we're talking naturally um, and I don't want to keep you forever, but there's just a right. few things I want to, like with another day, if you listen closely, there are different places in that tune where you you your vibrato oscillates at different rates. You mm -hmm. make these choices um, for for the deliverance of the song and the part. Um, I think you could you know you could listen to the song and never make note of that, and it's fine. You don't have to know know that or or call it out. But the fact that you do that, whether mm -hmm. you thought, oh, I'm going to do this, or more likely it was like this is how it's going to sound good. Nevertheless, like there are some vocalists who just don't have that kind of command. Right. Um, and, and there it is. It's a, it's a technique that's kind of nested inside um, the tune that is, I think, really but you see, powerful. And, and that's cool that you're, you're you know, like you're, you're very sensitive to all these little subtleties that are going on. And I think that's awesome, man. It really is. And who was genius at that? Freddie Mercury. So when mm. I was a kid growing up and I'd hear how he uses his vibrato and there would be a purpose behind it it wasn't just oh, so i just want to sound sweet you right. know at this point i just want to sound pretty no like you they should be there to accentuate that particular moment in the song and it has to have a purpose it's not about you know going after the the, the pretty contest you know or the the sweet sweet sugar cane you know stick it, it's about, you know, having a place and the place is something that is it, it's just going to ring well beyond what the note that was sung. And yeah. and I think that that was another thing that I just really took to heart when I was a little kid listening to somebody like Freddie and going, OK, you know, like I think subconsciously I was taking all this in at that point. I wasn't going, wow, I can see why he's doing that. Later on, yes, because when I got more and more involved in, in really trying to craft the voice and really making something 
you know, like saying the only way that I'm going to make it in this industry is if that I create something that no one else is doing. And that's kind of like what Freddie did there, or what Robert sure. did there, or what Ian did there, or did, ba -ba boom, you know, or Lou Graham, who, another phenomenal freaking singer and one of the most gorgeous tones I've ever heard in any singer. Steve Perry, give me a break. I listened yeah. to Journey like it was, I don't know, like the jeans that I wore, you know, it, yeah, it yeah. was just, just unbelievable voice. And it was all about that. Who else sang like Steve Perry? Nobody else sang like Steve Perry. Nobody you know? else, right. Any one of those singers that I just mentioned, no one sang like them. That's why they are who they are, who they were, and who they continue to be known as. They're iconic. You know? They're well, iconic. And this speaks also to something I think I said up front, which is um, there is no dream theater as we know it without your voice. Um, oh, thank you. You could, you could stick someone else in front of the mic. Yeah. But the thing is, is when someone arrives at a dream theater show, it's unless they hear that sound. Now there are bands who found replacements. Journey found Arnell Panetta. Yeah, yeah. Arnell, when he sings his own stuff, doesn't sound like Steve Perry. No, he doesn't. So there's no. There's a, a level of sort of mimicry Correct. that that um, it's jukebox. But right. and that's no that's no offense to Arnell. I think he's awesome. For sure. I think he's an amazing amazing sure. singer. But that's what you're becoming, right? The jukebox hero. I mean, Lou Graham sang sang about. <laughs> <laughs> was it, he wasn't singing about that particular <laughs> but, but you know and yeah, 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 yeah. you know what i mean like hey that song stands for itself let's just go listen to that anybody listen to yeah, lou graham singing jukebox tune. hero and you're gonna go what you know but yeah i i know what you're saying right there there is that there is like okay you know i can tilt my voice over this way and sound a little bit like this guy or a lot like this guy depending on who it is and then i can bring my voice back into being okay now this is who i am and right. and um you know a lot of singers are like that a lot of great singers can kind of mimic pretty mm -hmm. damn well they can they can do other things you know but there's uh, guys yeah. in vegas who make a whole career of that oh my god they can sound like anybody um it's it's incredible but that's it really is it, it underscores your point though that that like yeah. the, the important thing is to be try and find your sound right um yeah and and you and that's uh, to bring it back to our topic like mm -hmm. images and words and dream theater arrived yeah with you with this like fully formed sound right um, and you've gotten better over time but it yeah. wasn't like oh he just kind of was a little bit good then like it arrived right. as right an yeah. album that is as we started it's at the top yeah. of most lists um yeah. for best metal album of all time or best progr yeah. progressive metal etc cetera, etc cetera. and right. it, uh, that owes itself in large part to your contribution there well thank um you. thank you and and you know a couple of other little things uh, you know i was going through this songs like um under a glass moon something we touched on before but there are numerous places on this record where mm -hmm. and a good example is in under a glass moon where um what you're doing is over the top of something that's really frenetic um the soft part in under glass moon when you come in after the first um verses and choruses there's a bit of an interlude and then you come back in and you're singing kind of in a in a softer uh voice but the stuff that's going on underneath you is just crazy so um right like that that um counterpoint and being able to sort of lilt and 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 waft over the top of it that's a it's a it's a nice skill to have as a vocalist and um you know the instinct I, I think there with a lot of that music is to respond to the energy of it but the mm -hmm. way you del you chose to kind of interpret and deliver that part so unique um and that th these kinds of moments occur uh in the record in multiple places and they're 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 delightful because they're surprising meaning um i think instinctually a lot of uh, vocalists would respond differently to, to the stimulus um yeah so this is part of i'm what i'm saying is this is part of what i think makes you unique well in, you know what's interesting about that and you're, and you're pointing out that in, in under glass moon and if it, i keep coming back to this because it, it it's 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 current and so even what i was doing back then 30 years ago you're talking about those little lush moments and the where I'm, I'm keeping things soft and lilt like the, just like floating above like i did that i still incorporate that technique and that approach to songs and i did in my latest solo album beautiful shade of gray there's a lot of moments through this album 
where I'm doing that, right. where I could have easily had sung something that was hard and powerful and something, but it, but it makes more sense for what's the message is, what's being told to, to keep it almost in this, this light and um, uh, caressing type uh, mode, but at the same time, giving it enough so that it, it doesn't become wimpy. It yeah. doesn't be, it does uh, so that the purpose, it's still purposeful, uh, yeah. so to speak. So it's, it's cool that you, you're picking out that stuff back then, because then when I hear you say stuff like that, and it, trust me, Peter, I mean, am I going to go back and listen to images and words from front to end? I, I don't think so. But when you point out things like that, I, rem I go, oh, yeah, you know what? He is right. And yeah, you, you are reminded of that if, it's, if it happens to be a song that we're going to put in the set list. I mean, yeah, sure. When you come across that section, you're like, yep. Okay, that's what I was doing. That's exactly what I was doing then. So you have to reproduce it the best well, you can. And, it's a, and um, so it's an yeah. ability you you have and you've cultivated, and it's it's part of that signature, and you're using mm -hmm. it um, all the way forward through the, the latest DT records, and in this in this in yeah. beautiful shade of gray, which is sonically has it is very distinct. Um, yeah. I, it, and it's largely. Uh, almost entirely acoustic i think you did one uh, song where you did an electric version yeah it but was it's devil and drag yeah we did another version yeah but the the um the record has this um this vibe because of the in way you chose to do the instrumentation and um and i spent a lot of time talking to paul about this when yeah, he was yeah. on the show but it, it what's cool about that is that it's 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 fresh um, like the, the, the obvious thing right. would, would have been for you That's to a great word for Oh, yeah. another dream theater style thing with me. Um, and sure, certainly, you know, their dream theater fans would have bought that, but mm -hmm. like we talked about earlier, like the, you're growing, you're evolving, you're wanting to do different things and um, yeah. take some chances. And this yeah. record is unlike other re recent records. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has its well, own yeah. sound. <laughs> and um, remember that daring and brave thing that I was talking about before. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's what this is. That's what this is. And that sure. it, I'm hoping yeah. that it will, yeah. I know that Dream Theater fans, at least what I've mm -hmm. seen, are really loving it. But I think it has potentially yeah. a much wider funnel, mm -hmm. as we used to say, um, of potential listeners. Yeah. Um, it, you know, just hopefully we can get it to them, um, which is why I talked to Paul, why I did want to talk about it here with you, because it's the kind of thing where, there's a i mean the whole album's good but there are a couple of tracks on there but i think once you hear them you have to hear the rest right and yeah for sure um it's a uh, uh in fact i think i think and i'm blanking on the the track title there was one of the songs um that hit me so hard i actually sent you a note um, oh am i right am i wrong oh my gosh dude that song yeah uh right do, i think that's a hit i think it for real man i think that song um there's something about the way you sing it. There's something about the the um, the, the progressions underneath it and the way they sort right. of right. Um, build and, and work with. It's, it's a very, you know, I don't know if anybody's going to listen to it, but it's it's about a sociopath, right? Yeah, so, yeah. You think you, you mentioned know, that? And, to but, me. but but yeah, no, I I think that. It, um, well, thank you for one. That song first, gave me first chills. And foremost, yeah, it, it's. You know, when Paul got me that, that beautiful chordal progression, I mean, like, I, I'm not kidding you. Like, I had the verse and pre-course written from the first listen through. Like, I'm always mm. record. I always have the re record button on when I get any idea, uh, whether it's coming from Paul or when I'm throwing him stuff because it's an idea I got. I, I go on the voice memo on your iPhone there thing. But but yeah, you know, and then just uh, the whole build. And then I said to him, I said, I want to have an epic. We were talking about Lou Graham earlier from Foreigner. I said, I want the end of this song to be epic-like. And it has to be. I said, what I want to think about is, I said, we both have to think about the song. I want to know what love is by Foreigner. Mm. 
And at the end of that song, you have that big choir going off and then Lou's continuing to sing. I said, that's what we got to hit. We got to bring it to that point so that it's just, it's glorious, you know? It is. And yeah, uh, it's a, yeah. and the th interesting thing I remember when I sent you that note is mm -hmm. <clears throat> at that point in time, I, I hadn't, I hadn't cottoned as we used to say when I was in high school to I hadn't what it, cotton. Wow. I hadn't, I hadn't cottoned to I what it was about. I hadn't yeah. understood like, the, <laughs> and so I, I was looking through those at the lyrics through a completely different lens and mm. it hit me like a very ah. pers a personal lens, oh. particularly in the early part. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. You lyrics. were saying that. That's right. That's right. That's and great. I mean, that is of course, at the end of the day, one of the great things about music is we bring our own experience and baggage sometimes to a song and it just and that's it, that's perfectly fine that that but that that should all tune be a part of that ride for sure yeah and and when i heard what like some of your conceit was for it uh it took on deeper meanings but um the the way that you frame the lyrics you did it in such a way that um they people can have an experience with it that that um draws from their own background Right. And that one and the, and the, the interrogatives that are in it, the, the questions you ask, because mm -hmm. they're kind of open, allows mm -hmm. it's almost like an invitation to answer yeah. them for yourself. I mean, the, the surface would be that it's, it's about a, a very uh, strained relationship. Right. Yeah. Right. Between yeah. the two and not the 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 inner dialogue that I was creating, which was my intended purpose yeah. was you know it's it's with the the individual but i can easily see you know you barely notice what i feel you know yeah. and and yeah. and all that so first you know uh these tiny seeds take root i fear like first of all first thing anybody that's going to go to is like okay he or she is saying this to their partner right, right? and right. instead of this what i was talking about was like freaking at the same time as this person is saying something to themselves, they are saying it to everybody else that exists around them. Is that, yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a communication. Like, do you really know who I am and what yeah. I'm going through? Yeah. But that, yeah. that could, you, like you said, it, it, it could apply to so many different scenarios. And, and one primarily being the, uh, the relationship between two people. Yeah. That, that relationship lens and, and it has a lot of permutations as when you start to describe it yeah. um but yeah. but even inside that the way that um the, the music beneath it the um we talked about the chord progression the way you build the song vocally it's uh it, 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 and the transitions into the chorus um mm. like they're it's so beautifully done because it it for me i always i get chills i, I get legit chills when i listen to music and that it, one did it to me and when i heard it uh had to tell somebody so i told you <laughs> no um, there you go yeah. but yeah that's one yeah. i'm hoping that that one's got some legs because i think if there's a gateway song into that record into this this section of your musical life assuming mm -hmm. that you'll do more with paul or in, oh, or in this style absolutely. we're already we're already writing on okay and working on i think that's so. i think that's great because i think this um and i would my little vote would be i'd resist the effort to get too electric with it like, I think you've got this cool sound. I 100% agree with you. It's yeah. not broken. Don't fix it. Don't fix it. Yeah, I'm right, man. No, no. I I, I completely <clears throat> agree. And we've had those conversations. Chance, too, has been in on these Oh, by the way, and, some of the you know, choices Chance made were so tasty on well, this record. You. Like, thank you. Just some really cool, yeah, cool he, stuff. Well, I appreciate that. And and he he really did. He He rose to the occasion. And what he was bringing to the table... Uh, both Paul and I were like, well, you know, uh, you know made the right decision. Yeah. He, he, he totally gets what we're going after. And, and that's vital. And it, the same stands true for, you know, Christian Polkin and the, the keyboard player. Wow. He, he just brought so much depth and, and yeah. uh, the sonic beauty that he brought into this, this album was just. It was a good chemistry. Undeniable. This you know? group that you pulled together, the, the good chemistry and the con the resulting music yeah. is it's fresh. Yeah, like, I know that that's a very marketingy term, but um, it's just no. But it it, it makes perfect sense. It, it should yeah. be said, you know, because it yeah. it does. It encapsulates exactly <laughs> what I think the experience is when somebody hears it. 
right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, and you, you know, and you don't need another dream theatery project. You are in dream theater. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah. And, and, and what's the point at that point? Like, yeah. why am I doing it? Because oh, you can't, why? Like, is gonna be, what are you going to do? Find somebody who's, too? yeah. You know? Like, what are you going to do? Find what? someone who's better than John Petrucci and no. better. Like, no, you're not going to go put together no. like a super group of super groups and, no. and outdo. So, so why no, not, not pursue um, musical yeah. stylings that also mean something for you? Exactly. And so what I was, I loved it when I it's heard. It's got to say something different or, or what's, what's yeah the sense of it. And it's got to show other layers to you as a musician. Okay. And and if it doesn't, then I, go for a freaking bike ride, man. I've loved all your <laughs> Don't solo even stuff. Freaking bother. Um, all yeah. the way back to the stuff you did with Trent Reznor, or not Trent Reznor, um, Trent Gardner. Gardner, yeah. Um, what a count. Um, but wow. this this is this is the most unique side mm. project. Not I, well, side maybe a bad way to put it, but yeah. Um, James Endeavor. Labrie, musical Endeavor. Endeavor. Yeah. 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 yeah, um, yeah for sure. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so. I have to ask one question on learning to live. Mm. Um, you you sing as why? F sharp. That's what your question should be. Why? <laughs> such a great, such a great song, <laughs> and and I love it. But then there's like halfway through, you're just going along, and you're like, okay, I'm learning to live. I'm learning to live. F sharp, high F sharp. Oh, what yeah, the hell? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was this part. Of, was this written this way, or did you yeah. just say, hey, I'm going to oh, hey, go man. do this thing? It was totally written that way uh it, it was funny because first time i i sang that song was uh we recorded a demo and the first little demo that we did was on a was it a four track eight track recorder at john my young uh had this this condo or whatever that he was sharing with a roommate and i still remember he had this spare bedroom and where I was sleeping a couple nights and that's where we went in and, um, and recorded. We had it all set up. Mike was recording me. <laughs> and so check this out. So we get to that part that you're talking about the F sharp and I, I do it, sang it and I finish. And all of a sudden the freaking bedroom door comes, boom, freaking swing and open. And Kevin Moore came running and going, what the fuck? Oh my <laughs> god that's exactly what we were talking about holy shit dude and i looked over and i'm like i'm in like you know what i mean i just like i'm standing there it was like this because <laughs> it was just like what happened who is this guy right and it was so funny because like and there's mike sitting down going you know like just yeah, love it. we got it we got it and it was so we finished that and it was actually the very next day. If you, if you look at uh, the book that Rich Wilson did there, uh, part of it, uh, it's the, uh, the commemorative uh, release. What's it called? Oh, fuck. Is it Lifting Shadows there? The, uh, sure. The, the book. Anyway, and you'll see us. There's a picture in the book, and we're all like this, and we're cheersing. And that was the next day when they asked me to come into the band. They were oh, like, wow. You know what? This is a no-brainer. We've kind of known this since the first night that you came down and started jamming with us, but you know, we just wanted to get this demo done. And it's like, it's a no brainer. Come on into the band. But, but I, I just, you know, so you're talking about stuff like that. It was, it was what was communicated to me, but nobody had actually sung it mm -hmm. like that. Like nobody had actually sung those notes. Like they were just, they were going, whoa, whoa, you know, and going up. And, and then you're going to go, Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Let's go. Let's do it. That, that's how that, that came about. Yeah. And then it just. Yeah. Well, of course, it's, it's a very talked about uh, section. So I had to I had to ask about it because it's there is this moment like as a lyrical person. It's a narrative song. And there's mm -hmm. this thing in Walt Whitman um, poetry uh, that's called the barbaric yop. And it's this idea that there's this visceral part of you that sometimes just needs to vocalize hmm. and um when i heard it the first and that's you know that's so in me. other words you're I'm yopping i'm barbaric <laughs> you're a barb you're a barbarian who barbarian yops. <laughs> <laughs> he's a natural barbarian yeah, yeah. 
Okay. No, the, the, no, go ahead. Yeah, this is go. me nerding That's out on my English That's stuff, but yeah. um, it, it's the same kind of idea. I used to be, or I still am a fan of a band called Tears for Fears. They've got a song called oh, Shout. Oh man, they're freaking amazing. Yeah, and Roland Orzabal. Another, what the production on that stuff back in the eighties? Phenomenal production. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, he's so talented. He's a very talented songwriter. Talented. And that oh. that song from the Big Chair album was um, <sighs> their breakout. The one before it, the hurting, I think, is even better but the, my point is right, is that the, right. in the song shout yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it pivots off this idea that sometimes you just have to let out the raw emotion and mm -hmm. and just that sh shouting it and that it's kind of the same i did with this barbaric yop and so when i heard you do this it i didn't hear for the first thing i i didn't hear first oh this singer is amazing and can get really high what mm -hmm. i heard was here's this song that's about learning to live overcoming kind of challenges it even says at one point um not so much love but but learning to live right so there was it, it kind of is at odds with some of the other lyrical ideas in the like in in a metropolis where love being the the last dance is the pinnacle this kind of takes an interesting step past that and says even if if should it be that love is not achievable learning just to live your life is a big deal so there's this like really interesting thing that my young never ending yeah. teasing out right and then in, in the context of that, you, you do this ascension. And so I didn't, later I'm like, oh, wow, what, what's the note? Oh, it's an F sharp. Like he must have no nut sack. How, can, how does he get that <laughs> note? Yeah. But then what I really thought. I can assure you I do. I'm okay, sure you but anyway, Well, chance ahead. is proof. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But what yeah. I first thought Anyways. was, it's how yeah. appropriate because yeah. this, this character that you're basically messaging in this he he's letting this out this is what i felt and so mm -hmm. the fact that it's so powerful and it, it gets so high just felt like this emotional release right. um another place where like the art is imit you know kind of imitating the theme and the content mm -hmm. um and the band needed a guy who could do that mm -hmm. uh and they they found you which is mm -hmm. good because that that song i mean many bands particularly on this record is their favorite tune Right. Um, right. Anyway, yeah. I just wanted so to it's highlight a, it's it. It's an amazing song. It, it really does. Is. It works on Aside a lot from levels. my singing, it's just a phenomenally written yeah, song. Yeah, it is. It's, just, it's, it's the awesome. most progressive, sort of progressive, progressive track on the record, I think. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Um, yeah. that, that's a tall order going up against, you know, things like Metropolis and uh, yeah. take the time. And, uh, I, did a, I did a little fun on a glass exercise with a friend of mine and and um to see how we would rank them and and uh it turns out a lot of people learning to live is the is a favorite tune wow. um wow. i just want to make one quick we've kind of talked about it already but um sure because my part of my purpose i want to make a couple of nods also to a view from the top of the world i think i told you before i think some of your best lyric writing in dt is on this record wow. um, you did cool. uh, the alien and answering the call i believe yep um okay. And the narrative work in those is really, really strong, James. This is the best oh, lyric you. writing you've done. This is my my opinion um, mm -hmm. in all of your DT work. Well, so well, like a fine wine, you're uh, mm -hmm. you're you're improving with age. Yeah. Um, and I know a little bit about language, so I feel comfortable, you know, making the assertion. Um, but the at a, at a larger level, you know, you guys are still kind of tackling. Even though it's never high-minded, you're tackling some pretty cool, big themes, things about life mm -hmm. and achievement and, and reaching higher and further. And this right. through line exists on mm -hmm. images and words. And so the not that there's not some songs that are just crunchy or fun or beautiful. Yeah, sure. or uh, Absolutely. But, but you guys don't shy away from, you know, um, but it's, and it's never, it never comes across as maudlin. And I, I think yeah, I'm right. just really impressed. Um, that you continue to be able to deliver this kind of, here's the other thing. I don't know if you noticed this, but many of the progressive bands that I know mm -hmm. um, very often, <clears throat> the lyrics kind of sound like a word salad. Like how many mm. multisyllabic words can I stick in and sound smart? Yeah. 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 You guys, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's just, but you guys don't. don't you mean much, cheesy? Is that geez, what you're saying? Peter? Yeah. 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 Let's just say, <laughs> just say it. Let's just say it. Yeah. Cheesy. No, like, I'm yeah, not sure what yeah. that even That's means. why you're a writer. That's why, that's why you have great books out. Cause you know how to do it without just offending. 
<laughs> no, but yeah. But yeah. No. So, but I, I just wanted to call attention for folks who may see this, right. who remember images and words from back in the day and mm -hmm. maybe aren't as current with the band. It's like right. everything we've talked about, you and I, mm -hmm. all of our, mm -hmm. you know, rabbit holes too. It's all still present in what you guys do. You're a working band that still cares about like each record you're putting out. It's also right. true with your with your your solo stuff. It, there's there's not a sort of resting on our laurels mentality. Like there's mm -hmm. always this this mm -hmm. real it, it, um, this effort. And I wanted I wanted to say it to you, but I wanted to say it in the context of a conversation that could be shared because um, yeah. I think it's it, it saddens me to think that someone may have been a fan of images and words when it was in rotation and aren't aware that you guys are making music that I think is as good and even better. <laughs> Yeah. 30 years later yeah um I, anyway i think that was you know point. it 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 probably does stand true at at for several uh fans that were uh you know around and the images and words here's the thing so i i remember uh when what was it it was like uh, moving pictures came out okay mm -hmm. or no was it signals 1980 I think that came out was it 81. And I remember a buddy of mine saying to me, Oh, Rush, those guys are still going. Those guys are still like making albums. I'm like, I just looked at them like, You freaking you from planet Earth? What are you kidding <laughs> me? And so yeah, there's there's probably, you know, that <clears throat> the same situation with us where somebody's going, Did you just say Dream Theater? Yeah, yeah, they got a new album. Like, what? Those guys are still around doing stuff yeah so you know i i think but what i think the big message there that i'm taking from what you said and i i can't thank you enough for saying that that that's that's the biggest compliment any uh, band artist whatever uh could hear is that what they're doing currently um still stands the test of time and it and it is as good if not showing uh better sides to who and what we are and what we've yeah. become uh, so, you know, that's that, right. that says a lot, like it says a lot. And, and, um, like I've said to you, when we, we started this podcast is that that means everything to us is that, you know, we're not just going through the motions and we're not just trying to put something out there and fill in the space and then give us an excuse to go out and be in front of our, our fans again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for you to say something like that, I mean, that's the ultimate compliment. It really is. It, it just is, uh, it, well, and as it much really as you, touches. Yeah. As much as you and I are friends, um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it um, just to stroke your ego. Uh, right. I, I, I kind of tried to dial my, my own personal attachment to, to you and the rest of the guys all mm -hmm. the way back and just listen to sure. the music for a few days, both records, kind of as a bookends type thing. Yeah, and wow. um, I realized that while I will, I do go back sometimes and listen to records. Certainly, when there's an anniversary or something, I'm right. always listening to the most current stuff. Okay. Um, That's great. Wow. Uh, and I, I, I don't know if that I'm typical of Dream Theater fans, but I, when I tried to be objective and I was listening, I'm like, man, there is all of the maturity of songwriting and pyrotechnics and range and power and right. lyrical and thematic approach all that stuff's the same and there's like these new things that they're that they're doing um mm -hmm. so my point my point is just that it's it's uh, i'm not glad handing you this this is um um I, when i listen to the new i'm excited about the new records because i know the energy you put into them and right. i want for for anybody who's ever fashioned themselves a dream theater fan a little bit because of and interesting. I talk, I'm old enough that I talked to one guy. He's like, "Oh, well, I wasn't really around, uh, uh, meaning alive, when images <laughs> came out." Oh, hey. So he came in like in the middle of your career, and I'm That's like, "That's becoming okay. more and more evidently clear to us each and every time <laughs> we go out." I mean, it, you know, it, it's it's funny because I've I've uh, actually joked around about that on stage. And I'm like, I said, well, I'm looking out at everyone here tonight. Thank you for coming out. You know, this is awesome. Look what we're doing here. It's what 
brings us all together, right? Ba, 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 ba. And I said, and, and I'm looking at, <laughs> there's a hell of a lot, a big percentage of you here tonight that I'm pretty damn sure when we do this next song, you weren't even alive and people are <laughs> laughing at that because yeah. that becomes more and more the case. The, the, the truth of the matter, the further on that we go and the longer that we, that we decide to do this, the, I'm looking at people that are 15, 20 years old, 25 years old out there. And yeah, they weren't, they weren't around when images was around they weren't around when, yeah. you know, when we're playing six o'clock, you know, from awake in 1994, like what the hell? No, yeah. they weren't. If they yeah. were, they were a baby, you know, if. Yeah. I had, yeah. I, there's a couple of times I've referenced songs off of those first few albums to fans who are dream theater fans. Like, well, I don't know that song. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, oh, you're, wow. you're, what year was that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you need to go back. Yeah. And 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 then the argument I'm making with this conversation too is um a lot of folks who lo even loved you guys but you know just have not stayed current. There's yeah. so much music. It, there was not like this hey we got into a greatest hits phase type mm -hmm. of thing. That's not how that's I mean if you guys may have released a record like that. But you guys have this like consistent routine of going yeah. in and writing another great record and you, and you you do the, the journeyman work of touring. Right. Um, I, you know, I think there's a couple things at play, though, there, Peter, and that is that we live in such a technologically based world. So we have so many distractions, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, we, you have gaming that goes on. Then you have people just communicating by this means all the time. Right. Then they have their jobs. Then they have their personal lives. And let's not forget, we have these streaming uh, platforms that people can just put music on in the background and whippy right. freaking do. And I'm hanging out with my friends and family and let's just have some background going on. Whereas it's almost like a, uh, uh, it, it, it's a relationship that we used to have with music that it, it's just not as prevalent as it once was where yeah. people would sit down that are big music lovers. And I'm not saying there's like, come on obviously hundreds of millions if not billions of people are, are you know truly music fans and they want to listen to things that that move them correctly you know and and so they are going to search out those artists that actually do that and that makes them you know get through their day with a big smile on their face right, right. but i think for, there's just as many almost as many that are like eh, whatever you know like i could just so can they get away from the bands that they at one point might have been very very close to and that that was a great relationship that they had with them uh of yeah it, yeah because there are it's just the world we live in it's everything has to be instantaneous and then we move on and we're all suffering from add you know so yeah. it, it's uh it's just a, a part of the thing but it would be nice from what you're saying here today and as many people as it can possibly reach around the world to say, Hey, you know, like, Hey, yeah, we are still here. And do take the time to no pun intended uh, to, <laughs> to, to listen to some of this. Yeah. Uh, that's what we it. currently are, are all about as a, as a, a band, as an entity. Well, that, and that was, that's the thing that when I first emailed you and John, um, I thought about wanting to ask John my but I just know he's more reserved personality. Sure. You guys were there at the get go. And um, I, there's, I know that there's a lot of energy and there should be an excitement around celebrating the 30th. And I thought, that's really cool. Yeah. We should do it. But the, my first thing was when I contacted you guys was I, I don't want to just go down memory lane. I want to use it as sort of a, a, a jumping point to talk mm -hmm. about the, the band is still current and still doing amazing work. Right. Um, it's not just a... Like I said up front, it's not, oh, yeah, yeah those guys used to be great. It's like, no, yeah. the guys are great. Yeah. They, they've mm -hmm. continued on. Maybe you've drifted, and you made a good point there. Like, as you get older, your responsibilities increase, and your time, you know, your your um, yeah. discretionary time shrinks. So that's yep. all valid. But I, my argument is if you liked mm -hmm. Dream Theater and you kind of just moved away from them because of whatever, yeah. just go spin something up. Like, how easy is it now? You just boot up Pandora or you boot up spotify right um right and and you're gonna and That's you're gonna amazing. experience this raft of of yep. music that from this band that you love mm -hmm. that you haven't heard 
And that's my, like, that's my, the ax I'm grinding with this. It's always fun to get to talk to you, but like, if there's some small right. number of fans who's like, yeah, oh, wow, they're still making music. Cool. <laughs> then I'll have done yeah. my job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's hope, let's hope that, you know, they, um, they rediscover. That's they right. Rediscover for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's, sure. that's what I wanted to do, man. I, you've been so patient to, to walk down memory lane and share some stories and, and oh, my pleasure, man. My absolute pleasure. Yeah, um, absolutely. I know you got some other things, so, um, I'll leave you to the rest of your day. Um, but congratulations on, um, 30 amazing years for well, putting a stamp you, on this band that pulled it into the hearts of so many people. Well, um, I'm a, I'm a booster of yours. I, I know what well, you I know do. you are. And, yeah. um, and, uh, uh, you know, your, your, your work has changed my life for the better. I know that sounds super, super maudlin, but it's true. Well, thank you, Peter. Wow, man. <laughs> yeah, it's well, all true. Jesus Christ. Maybe I should stay on here all day with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but thank you. And no, I, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough for all the beautiful things you've said throughout this, this, uh, interview. And, uh, it really does mean something uh, we don't, you know, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again, Peter, is that, that we don't take any of this for granted. We, we never have, we know we're blessed. We're doing what tens of millions of other uh, fine, fine musicians have dreamed about. And, and, you know, and unfortunately they, they can't see it through to fruition in the sense of a career. And right. then beyond that to be, be doing something that has touched millions of people i hate listen we, you know there's some moments where i'm walking around going wow jesus i i have done this you know like it, it's yeah. it's crazy and that i've been able i've been so fortunate to be able to to do this for so long and and to to leave what will be you know i hope is 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 thought of as you know being legendary to a certain degree and um but yeah, you've always been a huge support, not only of me personally, but yes, of the entire band. And we, yeah. you know, everybody in the band is great friends with you. You know, we all love you and, and listen, just continue doing what you're doing and, and all the best on you, on your, uh, you as a, an author, uh, and you've written incredible books and then you as a musician. So continue to write great, great music. Absolutely. We'll do man. Thank you. And funny, okay. funnily, we, Early on, you said uh, you anticipated me on something and you anticipated me there because I was going to, to ask you in closing, you know, if you ever sort of stop and think, wow, like, yeah. look at this thing that had been a part of building because yeah. it's indisputable. This record is mm -hmm. fixed in sort of the pantheon. Um, yeah. Like, I, it's not me just saying that. It's why mm -hmm. I've shared all of these other industry acknowledgments. Like, it, it resides in that lofty air of one of the most um, influential records ever and that yeah. owes a huge part to you um oh, i mean you. there's a raft of, of singers who came after who um you inspired and anyway i'm so, still meeting them today yeah it's yeah crazy i'm, I'm still, sure that that's still still am and, and and they're all they've all been so so kind and and uh and then when i listen to them i'm like i'm picking off a little bit of that I'm picking, but it's great hey listen i mean that's right that's it's a it's a you know, it's a it's fraternity really flattering and, uh, you know. and you you've but, always yeah. been gracious you know with with people yeah. who are are fans of yours and that's not just me saying that right. so so again yeah. congratulations okay. well, on your you. your career um i know that it's you've got new chapters opening up um so people need sure. to check out james's um is your is your new website up and rolling no, nah, it will be uh actually like that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to okay. do another conference. Uh no time. So jameslabree.com yeah. though, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So it will be up and running probably within the next week or two. Yeah. Okay. So people watch weeks, for that because yeah. he's got some new merch that's coming, I think, uh around all the solo work that he's doing. That's a record you yeah. guys need to check out. Uh Beautiful Shade of Grey. Mm -hmm. Um and we'll just yeah, watch for, sure. for all the new updates on dream theater touring and stuff yeah, as it yeah. comes for sure for sure well thank you peter all right my awesome, friend man take good care of yourself okay you too bye-bye okay bye-bye